Hey everybody, how we doing? Welcome to the stream. Welcome back to Beyond Kerbal. Goodness me, it's been a while. Oh, not a while since the last video, but a while since I was last playing this install. Really, yeah, <laughs> doing this series. We've got a bunch of people in the chat. We've got a lot of concurrent viewers. Hi, Kainasa. We got we got Wiggle Zoz, Jewel the Planet. Uh, some nicknames in Russian. We've got a few of the patrons in the chat. Hello. Hello, everybody. Peter with an Akinata. We've got hello from Russia. Hello there. Lots of hellos. Someone's saying hello, Brady. Yes. <laughs> will, this be, will this stream be posted as a video later? Yes. Yes, it will. It'll be saved as a video. It's not going to be edited. Someone was like, oh, can you edit it down like a normal episode? Do I want to edit down? I was going to say edit down three hours of footage. A normal episode is like about 10 hours worth of footage. Um... Am I going to edit this down? No, because it's going to be a build stream. Um, there's no real way to edit that down apart from just fast forward it. And most of this stream is about me chatting to my patrons, really. Um, because my top tier patrons, my Emperor Penguins, um, one of the perks is that they get to have a little chat with me. And I thought it would be nice to do that on stream and, and get to know some of them. You know, my, uh, some of my biggest supporters and uh, just have a little chat. So we're going to be bringing a few of those on tonight. Um throughout the course of the stream not just patrons as well some of my bigger donators are bringing a lightning gamer on a little bit later um so they'll be coming on little segments and just having a little chat which i think would be nice uh but yeah the purpose of the stream we're going to be designing a next generation interstellar vehicle uh based loosely off of the avenger star from avatar just because it's a cool design uh, it makes a lot of sense actually it's a really really cool design of a spacecraft um and you know a lot of actual real world physics would have been applied in designing it which i really really like uh, so we're going to try and replicate that uh, if I figure out how to use this install again because it has been a long time <laughs> since I I played this, um, which is why. Hence, you know, chatting to the patrons and, and stuff and maybe letting them carry the stream a little bit <laughs> while I'm chatting to them because um, I'm going to struggle to come up with things to talk about while I'm building a ginormous spacecraft because we're going to need a bigger spacecraft to go to a much more distant star system in the finale because there's only one more episode to go. I am trying to bring the Uncurable to a close. Um, but yeah, there's, there's one more, one more episode to go. The big cinematic finale. I'm going to cover a song, which is going to be a surprise. And, uh, and yeah, oh, I can make this bigger. That's cool. I didn't realize. Okay, so we need to get an idea for the scale of this thing first. Um, we're going to spend the first. Oh, hello. How did it? <laughs> Lags a lot. You're already on stream. <laughs> Hey yo, let's see you back. Thought I'd get on the donation board before Steak empties his wallet. You're already coming on the stream and you're donating. Oh. Thank you so much. Very, very generous of you. I mean, yeah, I'm literally bringing Lagzalot on stream for a bit. Maybe Lagzalot's trying to get preferential treatment and come on for longer. I'm trying to bring everyone on for in there. I think it'll be about. <laughs> that's Ellie sneezing behind me <laughs> in uh, about like 25 30 minute segments ish it depends how long people want to be on because I know some people are busy and um, can't be on for the entire time I'm just gonna just chat to you guys by myself um, for the first 15 minutes or so um, yeah I mean this thing the main I'm looking at a picture of the Avengers star the main thing is just a giant truss <laughs> I like and state going to go into a donating war again I mean I do directly profit from that so I'm not going to discourage it um, but FYI, Ellie is here. We both have COVID, so we're isolated together. Say hello. Hello. I don't know if you can hear that, but yeah, she's ill behind me, dying on the sofa. Um, so yeah, uh, I think uh, I think maybe I think some of the patrons might want to chat to her more than to me. <laughs> so <laughs> maybe she'll come on a little bit. Uh, those of you that don't know, Ellie is, um, does my XCOM streams with me, which are a lot of fun. And uh, I've got a few people in chat who I can see who. Uh, who join in the XCOM streams. A lot more people watching these streams, uh, which fair enough, this is what most of you are here for. So the interesting thing about the Venture Start is it's actually a tractor design. It doesn't, so unlike the Clark, which had a big Daedalus engine at the back pushing it, um, it has two antimatter powered engines pulling it from the front. And that makes a lot of sense because a lot of materials are stronger in tension than they are in compression. You don't have to deal with buckling um, when you're in tension. So you can make the whole structure a lot lighter. And it's actually a really, really cool design. So. I'm trying to figure out how long this needs to be. I'm going to bring in a condor. Just a crew condor. Is this the normal condor? 
There's the cargo one. Yeah, I'm just going to merge this in just to get an idea for scale because these, I want these to be about the scale of the Avatar dropship. So this isn't going to be like the full. Need all the breathing apparatus oh, hello. Oh, Pika 6. See through Billy's lies. It's twenty four ninety nine. Thank you very much. We might be airmailing you to Antarctica in the future to hang out with the penguins. I mean, I think it probably cost a fair bit more than the issue <laughs> to do that. Thank you very, very much. That's very generous of you, tipping twenty four ninety nine. Um, appreciated, Pika. Is Pika a patron? Pika does has definitely donated on previous streams. I think you might be in the credits of the. You're definitely in the credits of the of the videos, right? There's a team to uh, Pika Six is definitely, definitely in the credits of the outro um, for donations. There's like different um, for the donations. Like for the donations, I think I put them in the credits above a certain donation amount because obviously for the for the Patreon supporters, it's a it's a set tier, but with with donations, it's a bit more fast and loose because obviously not everyone really wants to use patreon and that's and that's absolutely fine um but yeah there, there are certain limits and then like i think it's if they exceeded like a total donation of i think maybe like f is it 50 no it's not 50 pounds i think it's less than that it might be 10 pounds i think then they yeah i think it's a tenner then they go into the credits and then if it's above 50 i think lifetime contribution then then I, i'll say their name as well um and bring them on stream to be fair, Pika's probably exceeded that. Pika, if you want to come on stream, uh, at me on the Discord. <laughs> you can come on later if you want. Um, I'm being distracted from designing the Venture Star. Okay, so I'm looking at pictures of it now. It's going to need to be about double this length. This is going to be a long boy. Even longer than uh, Trent's, well, N9's um, <laughs> aircraft in for all Kerbal kind. I wonder how massive I can actually make this without it breaking the game. I mean, the Clark already almost breaks the game. Oh, this is going to take a while to <laughs> scroll up. Yeah, I think that's, uh, that's as far as I can zoom out. Okay, I can I can go to the top of this. Cool. So the Clark already almost breaks the game with the size of it. Like, when it loads in, it, <laughs> it's, like, almost as big as the load range. Uh, pitching the camera down, it does not seem to like that. I think that might be a bit too long. We'll remove a few. Yeah, if we need to make it longer, we always can. But let's let's slap the engines on the front here. Let's. Oh goodness me, this is this is a lot of scrolling. <laughs> it's going to be the, most of this stream. I think is just going to be me scrolling. Okay, we can't pitch down to look at it because that breaks the camera. Cool. Okay, so it's sort of like the the truss sort of thickens near the front, and I don't know if there's a way of replicating that. I'm just going to pick engines first. So what we need is two massive antimatter reactors. And then we can connect engines directly onto those. So let's find the reactors. I think the reactors are here we are. Do 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 positron antimatter reactor, beam core antimatter reactor. I think we want the beam core. We don't want any, any fusion ones. That's the positron one. Fusion reactor, fusion reactor, fusion reactor. I think it's this one. What does this produce? Produces charged particles. And it be, can be connected to a plasma nozzle or a magnetic nozzle. Yeah, this is the one we want. Okay, cool. So we're going to want... Oh, Olaf's donated. Hi, Olaf. Oh, you activated the... It's supposed, it's supposed to be really rare. <laughs> it's supposed to be super rare, that um, <laughs> that donation thing. But somehow it seems to pop up more than anything else. Uh, thank you, Olaf. I mean, he's also coming on stream later. Break the game, break the stream. Nothing a strong-willed penguin can't do. Let the games begin. Cheers, Olaf. Long-time supporter of the channel. Greatly, greatly appreciated. I named an astronaut after you in Mars Horizon. But you won't see that episode until, like, April. Because I scheduled them all up. Um, so that I can keep a semi-consistent upload schedule during my studies. I know some people are going to hate me for that, but it is what it is. Can I not attach these directly to the truss? No, I can't. Okay. I'm looking at the way that it's symmetrical. It's actually symmetrical along this axis, which is interesting. Um, 
Do we mount the engines like this or on the sides? Just thinking of the geometry of the truss. I actually think, even though it's not going to be like symmetrical down the middle, I think the engines either side like this is actually going to look, it's going to work better. You don't want it on the diagonal of the truss, if that makes any sense. Uh, anyway, let's find a way to attach these. Let's get ourselves some radial attachment nodes. Sorry if I'm a little bit raspy, by the way. Um, I do have COVID. Ellie has COVID as well. I gave it to her and I'm still in the doghouse for that. Um, so yeah, the least I could do was wait on her hand and foot. She's been lying on the sofa all day, feeling sorry for herself. Playing Civilization. Actually, you haven't played Civs today, have you? Not Just, today. No, not today. Okay. I've been trying to break her, teach her to play Civ 5 and get hopelessly addicted to it like the rest of us. So far, I think I'm doing pretty well. Okay, engine wise. Um, we're almost at quarter past seven, so we're all, we'll almost bring on our first guest. But, what are the pipes on the truss? I assume that's just, like, fluid transport or something? I don't know, just truss things. Like, the middle one is for crew transport, obviously. Um, then these are just, like, fuel lines, power lines. <laughs> Someone says, like, I gave you a gift, why would you not love it? I'm not sure COVID can be counted as a gift. Yeah, no, I don't know if I'd call it a gift either. Um, right, where are my magnetic nozzles at? Uh, let's go back to Interstellar and look at all the engines. Um, ma, 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 ma. Electric propulsion, is that it? No, nuclear propulsion. Fusion propulsion. We got a fusion rocket there. Thermal nozzles, magnetic nozzles. Aha! Advanced alternative to the thermal rocket expel high temperature charged exhaust, extremely high velocities. This is it. Only if it's been paired with reactors that generate charged particles. Look at that engine ISP though. Cure. Okay, so it does drain LH2. I don't know if I don't think it runs purely on antimatter. But you need to power it with a lot of antimatter. Lightning's donating. Oh, so it begins. Ready for a fun stream. So I believe that donation effect is for the person who's... It's supposed to be for the person who's currently donated most of this stream. But, um... Lady Legs a lot tip more than that. So that that hasn't quite worked properly. That's a bit odd. <laughs> the, the stream invasion is supposedly for... Oh, look at that. That actually looks relatively close to, um... To what the engines actually look like. I, I don't know if I can just stack these antimatter reactors. I think these engines are going to need to be much bigger. But let's look at the max ISP of this. The max ISP, I'm going to count these zeros. It's 15, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So that's 1, 2, 3. It's 1.5. I can say megaseconds. I guess that's a unit. But regardless, it's 15 and then 5 zeros after it. Let's look at the Daedalus. Engine performance. Uh, these are different upgrade technologies. Yeah, so it's actually got comparable specific impulse, 3000 kilonewtons. So I'm just comparing these. I don't think this actually accounts for This is 100 kilonewtons. I don't know if this accounts for the amount of charged particles we're going to be ramming into it, though. I don't actually know how this works. <laughs> we'll have to figure it out on stream. We'll figure it out. Yeah, but I assume this just feeds... Here we go. Reactor fuel, antimatter... Cool, it's going to be producing a lot of energy. I don't know if the amount of energy you feed into it changes the um, the output of the engine, if that makes any sense. We'll figure it out. Regardless, I think we can scale these up so that they produce a lot more. Um, whew, that looks pretty cool. Okay, we'll scale up these reactors too. 
Right, that's a nice massive engine. Um, we'll figure out exactly how we're going to connect these later. I mean, we don't need to perfectly design the entire thing today. I don't have any tracks. Oh, Lightning Gamer has tips. Oh, I'm just going to help bump those numbers real quick. I'll stop it here. <laughs> You're already going on stream. <laughs> but thank you. Thank you very much for the donation. Um, right, let's get the massive radiators on this because the most iconic thing about the Venture Star is it's it's huge radiators, right? Um, they kind of look like these ones. Yeah. Can I get like a inline radiator? Oh, I can. Oh, this has already got a connection point at the top because it connected it like that. Oh, that's going to be problematic, isn't it? God damn it, why can't I attach these things radially? That's really irritating. Can these attach like that? Okay, we're gonna have to attach it like this. So if we Come on. Come on game. Like me today. Thank you. Okay. I don't have any treads. Oh, someone else is giving the stream treads. Lifetime donators get some loves. Where's a shout out for rocket assisted takeoff at Beardy? Fortunately, the Venture Star is assembled and otherwise would be a great candidate for a jet assisted takeoff. Ah, yes. I think you are you are in the outro. I know you're definitely in the outro. Thank you, Jato Reto, for your donation. Um, yeah, that was an entire for all couple kind stream of um, <laughs> telling me to add rockets for rocket assisted takeoff and me finding about a thousand different ways to say no. That was fun. <laughs> Thing is, if someone's spamming it in chat, you can just ignore them, but if they're throwing money at you, well. <laughs> okay. So I can fill into these engines. That looks... Actually, that's one too long. We want three of these. Because, yeah, we're going to need to get rid of a lot of heat. We're going to need some huge-ass radiators on this thing. Um, but then I'll go for one more minute or so. And then we'll bring on our first guest. What does this one do? Ooh. That's cool. I'm not going to use it, but it's cool. Do these only attach onto, like, endpoints or something? I don't have any tracks. Oh, hey, Andrew. Long time no see. Have you thought of using any other interstellar planet packs in the future beside extra solar? Strange New Worlds is really good. Um, I mean, this is going to be the end of the series. So, no, not really. Um, oh, these do radio attach, but just not onto any of the interstellar parts. Well, that is extremely irritating. Why do these parts got to be special? But yeah, I've, uh, thanks for the donation, Andrew, by the way. And thanks for the awesome mod, which I am using extensively. But uh, yeah, no, I've, I did consider it. Maybe Extra Solar was always the, the best one. Always back in the day when I started the series. And so obviously, you know, I had to, you know, need to continue using Extra Solar and, and bring the series to a close. So there's no point adding another one. I did consider... Um, oh, we've got another donation. Steak! Oh, goodness me. Hello. <laughs> Get the donation game locked down. Thank you, Steak. You're all, you're all already on stream. What are you doing? It'd be cool if we could bring Andrew on stream, actually. Andrew, do you want to come on stream? It'd be cool to talk about your mod. If you want to come on. I don't want to promise too many slots on stream. I don't only have so much time. Um, what was I saying? Oh, yeah. But <laughs> thank you, Steak, for the massive donation. That's actually ridiculous. <laughs> They're coming in faster than I can react to them. Um... But yeah, the, um, what was I saying? What was I saying, Ellie? I was talking about something. I wasn't listening. She wasn't listening. Uh, that's fair enough. I wasn't expecting you to listen. Um, oh, yeah, yeah. I was just saying, like, I, I was considering for a while uh, having the series continue and exploring other solar systems with the ship I am now designing and yada yada. But that, that was before the save file became unstable. And then I started doing For All Kerbal Kind, which is a lot of fun. Like, a lot, a lot of fun. Um... And yeah, I mean, I've just, as I said in the in the last video I did, I've done everything that's challenging already in this series, so. Yeah. 
there's not a huge incentive to to carry on with it if that makes sense um anyway let's bring our first guest on our first guest of the night is going to be scott who is one of my emperor penguins i'll ask him if he'd like to come on stream now and we will have a little chat i've never done this before so we'll see how it goes um he could be anyone he could have just played the long game and come on and start playing rick astley the moment i connect to the call that's the risk i'm prepared to take okay let's give him a call hi scott oh hey how's it going hello how are you doing <laughs> um sorry for causing trouble i imagine <laughs> you haven't caused any trouble it's fine <laughs> i feel like i need to give context <laughs> Uh, yeah, yeah. How you've been on a twenty-four hour charity stream, right? Yes. Okay. So it all starts uh, with doing software engineering at uni, oh, yeah. and I'm taking my placement year. Okay. What uni are you at? Uh, Queen's University. I'm in Northern Ireland. Okay. Awesome. Yeah. So um, I'm British, unless I'm talking to the wrong person, then I have to be <laughs> Irish. Right. <clears throat> but uh, the, the the my work place i'm doing placement at mm. they're doing a big charity marathon for mcmillan cancer support and uh it was it started yesterday <laughs> the problem with it was they had to con trying to convince project managers and everything to give us the office for the entire day wouldn't mm. be possible so it had to start after the work day oh no wait so uh, wait wait 24 hour stream off after a yes. full day of... so it finished oh at half five today <laughs> so you stayed actually... up to come on my stream yes, i was aware how are you still alive i i have nothing uh, the, respect. i i must have made a deal with some eldritch beast at some point is my only <laughs> reasoning uh, I, I'll be punished in the future. Literally, I am just running right now, and I'm trying to run just long enough that when I go to bed, my sleep schedule will work itself out. Right. So this is okay. this so is you why just skip I'm... a day. Yeah. Yes, this is when I made the plan that today when someone else brought it up. That's why I went. Yes, I'll be on the stream. <laughs> well, thanks for thanks for coming on. It's really nice to well, really nice to chat to you. Yeah. So we so see you're doing so you're doing software develop is it software development? Uh, um... Software engineering. Engineering. So... Sorry. Oh, fellow engineer. Howdy, yes, how's it going? Oh, fine. I yeah. just working on computers. Yeah. And I, w I also would have planned what I was going to say more, but uh, like I said, I've I assume your brain is 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 like five times as frazzled as mine. I mean, I'm dealing with COVID at the moment, but at least I've got enough sleep. Uh, uh, well, here's the thing. After some point, I think it just became, I'm just slightly more erratic than usual <laughs> which is a dangerous amount of erraticness to be fair for a dive yeah. this deep? oh someone else has donated legend links hello from maple syrup land good luck with the stream thank you legend links <laughs> sorry go on scott sorry yeah you were saying sorry, no sorry i'm just I'm, I'm, why are people saying scott and chat and then everyone went you're in you're on a stream that's yeah, why yeah you are on a stream how, how does how yeah. does it feel to be on a how, how does it feel to be on a stream Second time I've ever been on a stream. The first time was yesterday. <laughs> Started yesterday. Yeah. Uh, so what were you doing on the stream yesterday then? It, so it was meant to be a gaming marathon. Well, it, it was a gaming marathon. We didn't make a schedule, which was a mistake. Ah, oh, right. So it went, we did all sorts of games. I played Fortnite for the first time. Mm -hmm. but that was an experience. Okay. Um, we had board games and we had plans to do a bunch of them and said, oh, we'll save them to later. Then we were too tired to do the board games. <laughs> yep. I had a V, I had a V, I had an Oculus Quest 2. That woke me up. Oh, that sounds cool. Yeah. What yes. are you doing on that? Are we doing Half-Life Alex or something? Or No, I t you can't get it on the Quest 2 unless you got a not? PC and everything. Oh. You, you'd need a PC and everything and then you could connect it to Steam. I, I looked right. this up once and I need a new PC first, so. Yeah. And, uh, but... So I was clever and Sniper Elite VR, because mm. nothing wakes you up like putting a bullet through a Nazi's brain. <laughs> of course. Yeah. But, um, yeah. I don't know if you have any questions for me or anything. Obviously, it's the first time we've spoken. Obviously, I've thrown you in the deep end a little bit. I didn't expect you to have um, 
about to be coming up for 24 hour charity stream but uh you know if there's anything you want to ask or uh do you know what i was gonna say this is the thing i discovered i started watching you two three so so many years ago it was been i think just before covid oh yeah and okay i started watching you i went i seen beyond kerbal first episodes and went what's this endurance thing went oh, back to yeah. the start of endurance watched endurance and I, I watched much of other stuff but part way through endurance there was a moment where i went oh, he's an l he's younger than me <laughs> oh, yeah it seems a lot of people annoying. had that moment yeah like the number of comments like, like especially when i talk about what i'm doing like, you know i'm obviously at uni at the moment and the number of people are like wait a minute <laughs> wait a minute hold up how old are but, you um the wait a minute part was even better because then I went, wait, no, but this is an old series. Went and checked what year it came out. We're the same age. Oh, no way. Yeah. Really? Yeah, we, I, we're roughly the same age. I took a gap year before uni. Oh, right. So, okay, yeah. Gap yeah, year. but an unplanned gap year, but a gap year nonetheless. Okay, but can yeah. I just say, when you're taking an unplanned gap year and then you find out this person's doing rockets... <laughs> <laughs> And you're like, it definitely motivates you. It goes, hmm, yeah, I, sh I should get off my... <laughs> well, I mean, we're doing comparative comparative degrees. Yeah. You know, nothing to, nothing to, you know, tell your nose off about software engineering. Yeah, I can I can make a website say hello world and you can make a... <laughs> You can make a satellite say hello, Mars. <laughs> you, I mean, you are vastly uh, <laughs> overstating my abilities there. I didn't say you had to make the satellite. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I did. Um, I did a level of computer science. Um, I remember being surprised by how how well that prepared me for for doing any form of engineering. I mean, um, you know, it was never recommended at any of the uni uni open days or anything. Um, my... yeah, they never recommended it, but. My, yeah, it's really useful. So you saying? My school for GCSE, we were the first year to do computer science. Get computer science as an option, oh, and really? it was great. Yeah. And then we were also the first year to get it for A level, and it was horrible. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know if you found this or not. Um, for me, like, so the GCSE computer science for me was really difficult. I think I was the first year where we had like a harder syllabus, and then so that was really really hard. But then for me at A level, it just never got any harder. It just stayed pretty much the same difficulty. All well, it was just learning a different language, but it never got like technically got any more difficult. Um, I don't know if that's the same for you or not. Uh, yeah, I agree. The th Our GCSE was very practical. We had a lot of practical work to do. Mm. And I much prefer that yeah, with yeah. computers. Our A level, was nearly there was very little practical hmm. it was all the, they also hired an entire new teacher to teach it oh they did the level. same for us yeah yeah it was the same but with us she was there for the for as but for the set for the actual like a2 the second year mm -hmm. she was off the entire year for maternity leave ah right and the teacher that replaced her she was not a great teacher the teacher that replaced her he was great but he had to use all the notes and material that she made right and yeah. i think and the second year of it was just the first year in a different order <laughs> and we have proof because we f in the first year there was one time she explained something and she had a diagram showing off i think it was a duty array and someone pointed out to her she made a mistake in it and she said i'll fix that for next year's notes fix it your you, and uh, told us how to fix it in the a uh, we thought she meant next year's a2 or a s in a2 we seen that exact same diagram with the exact same mistake right yeah not ideal really no but mm. teacher was good um and he fought and now i'm doing it in university so oh, well. either that or maths and I hit my <laughs> oh god yeah um that was one thing that was sort of like i don't want to say a lie but it was just something that got peddled which was you, know, you if you want to do engineering that they really really recommended you do further maths i got a bigger advantage having done computer science and i am so glad i didn't do further maths because having known people who did um ellie you or did further maths how was further yeah, maths I'm not gonna stand for this <laughs> okay well ellie's weird robot. Um, she, she liked it. Yeah, apparently she enjoyed further math. What a weirdo, right? 
That's the prop. You've now ruined the XCOM streams for me, thanks. <laughs> Apparently, you've ruined the XCOM streams. I've ruined the XCOM streams? Yeah, I'm you gonna get enjoy shot them again. now because you, because you enjoy further math. <laughs> no. Do you uh, do you watch the XCOM streams? Yes, uh, oh, yeah. I'm Smilligan. Yeah. I, I, oh yeah, of course. You're 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 one of the soldiers, weren't you? I was thinking about it. Yeah. Have you died yeah. yet? I don't know. We just go through so yeah. many soldiers. I, I I think I've had two. I think last I checked. Okay. Yeah. Because the first one did sort of okay, and then died, <laughs> and I want no, I want a more dramatic death, so I oh, paid yeah. for his medical bills. <laughs> and my oh, second I remember. Soldier, yeah, yeah. The first time he actually hit a shot after missing shot after shot after <laughs> shot, the first time he actually hit something, it was friendly fire. Oh, of course it was. Wonderful. And I, you know, he's probably a better representation of me, so he's good. <laughs> I can't remember if he's dead or not. Um, I guess we'll find out in the next stream. Probably won't be for um, for a little while because, well, I mean, we have COVID at the moment, which isn't ideal, but. Um, yeah. yeah, there will be a stream at some point. Yeah, no, that's fine. I'm trying to trying to figure out which of these. Um, into I haven't been in this install in such a long time. Like, to do the last oh. episode, um, I just had to you know you fly craft that were already built and flying around. I haven't had to build anything in eighteen months. <laughs> so what? figuring out where everything is is. Uh, what is this place? Literally. What are all these things? Literally, literally. I, yeah trying to figure out where a certain part is like the um the bit on the front of the clock that protects it from yeah interstellar that dust bit. and stuff I, I cannot find it for the life of me or no not that bit so no, i just no. remembered the streams in delay so i'm pointing out a thing that happened like 20 <laughs> seconds ago for you yeah that was hey. when you when you sent me the message to go and went but he hasn't said it on stream yet. <laughs> <laughs> also can i ask that i can't remember if i killed you i might have what do you mean killed me like uh, no, Karnasa was saying in the chat was did i kill him oh i mean pff, probably to be honest i mean Karnasa has died everyone's... so many times i think everyone's had at least one turn at killing him um... it's, it's it's the first, it's the final step of the interview to get into the XCOM program <laughs> to get Karnasa against the wall have you shot Karnasa? he just used him as target practice to be honest like i wouldn't blame uh, him oh that reminds me of my a wee easter egg i only learned about recently in enemy unknown uh, oh, and yeah. the new ones yeah i love uh, the new ones i love them it's in when in the enemy unknown when you unlock a new weapon type lasers or something mm -hmm. you see valen or a random scientist i can't remember right now test it against oh, the target yeah. it's a picture of the I, old sectoid isn't it yeah i only yeah. noticed that recently and it oh, blew my you? mind Ah, oh. have you ever played the old ones, or is it just on the streams that you've seen them? No, I've seen them. I I've seen them before, uh, but I've never played them. I've played Xenonauts, which oh yeah, I uh, I, don't know, I tried oh. it. I just felt like it was mechanically, and you know, it looked better and everything, but I don't know. It just somehow lost some of the charm for me. Um, yeah, because I I have tried because I got the original for free at one point for through some deal or something. And I tried it, and I got in the first mission, took one step, and got shot. <laughs> yeah, and the soldier died. Ranger. And yeah. I went, this game's... N I don't think I'm going to enjoy this game much more past this. Save. Yeah. And, and Xenonauts, I got two steps. At no. But, um, so I, th I think it's just because I never had the nostalgia of the original. I find Xenonauts uh, experience different. Yeah. And they... But... I mean, I never play well i did play the original but it, it wasn't until after so the thing the reason why it has so much nostalgia for me um is just because i used to watch the yogs cast play it i used to watch lewis on the yogs cast doing streams um i need to go look like, in the up. game and so because of that um so that i sort of grew up watching people play um play xcom ufo defense so so because of that that's why it has you know sort of a special place in my heart um, I think that's why I have a certain level of nostalgia, even though I didn't grow up playing it, um, because I, I tried it and was awful at it. And then I, I, that was in, I think about 2011. And then that was when Enemy Unknown came out in 2012. So then I sort of grew up playing that. Um, I, I got into, um, I think I, most of my friends don't care for games that much. Mm -hmm. Uh, a lot of them are more movies things, but one of my friends, he, the, he cares about XCOM. He, 
enemy unknown he freaking loves and that's how i was brought to the series mm. so then i went with the originals because i'm the person that sits in the corner and goes well the lore <laughs> well actually <laughs> well actually like um my I've to, uh, when my friends trying to introduce me to stuff now I I do warn them. Are you okay? Because I will ruin it for you if you get me into this. I just had to load will... up the um the Clark's. I just didn't mention on the stream. I had to load up the Clark craft file to figure out what the part was called. It's called the magnetic scoop. So we found it now. Cool. <laughs> Sorry, you're saying. I couldn't. I I can't remember any of the names for any part in anything. <laughs> this one looks cool. Stick it. No. There we um. Go. But uh. The oh, I've lost my train of thought. Well, Sorry, bye. It was nice talking to you. That. Yeah, I think um, I think I need to bring the next person person on now. But it's been lovely chatting to you. Um, really love to to meet you. Yeah, I mean, you know, um, I do want to have I want to have a little bit more time. I mean, I mean you're at uni, you know what it's like. Well, they obviously are doing a place yeah. yeah. Um, just barely find any time. But I would love to do like a game night. I think just with all of my patrons. But probably just I just have the Emperor of Penguins in in the chat. But have everyone all the patrons playing i think i would love to do halo infinite just because the multiplayer is free to play but i'll probably have to wait till it's stable <laughs> for that yeah to work. no um, i'd be interested in that yeah i think that'd be a lot because i've yeah i only played halo reach a small amount so i'd be interested in get trying halo for the first time yeah oh i i did a, a halo game night an mcc game night a while back just with every you know a bunch of sub subscribers it was so much fun so I'd love to do that at some point. Um, so yeah, maybe see you again. Uh, see you again at that. And thank you, thank you so much for all of your, you know, all of your support. I mean, well, as, like I said, I am placement this year, so I'm yeah. getting a paycheck, and you are in trouble. So I don't. Need... <laughs> thank you and so much. Next, and and as the rule of every student is, I must do the responsible student thing and irresponsible responsibly spend money <laughs> you're one of the more responsible things the ps5 <laughs> sitting next to me is the irresponsible thing <laughs> i do like to oh i like to think that but anyway, it really really means a lot i mean yeah i mean you're what you know what allows me to Fine. keep doing what i'm doing and you know keep making content rather than having to to get a real job so you know it's endlessly appreciated so so That's thank you so much job. thanks it's for coming on stream and get some sleep <laughs> this is all going to be recorded so you might want to i'm going to sit around for another hour and then sleep so try and, and get the sleep for, schedule yeah, work yeah, into a coma yeah. I remember my brother once said for a, like a land thing at uni he um he stayed up for 36 hours and then he slept for 25 hours straight so he went to bed at 7 woke up at 8 p.m and he was like oh i've only slept for an hour then just like after talking to some friends suddenly realized he'd missed a whole day um yeah 32 really was half five i can't i can't math right now i gave up on math yeah that's understandable anyway lovely lovely talking to you scott yes. and uh i'll see okay. you uh see you another time yes right. i am not going to blabber on the ground and start shaking um <laughs> Well, I mean, best of luck. Hopefully, yes, don't. Thank you. I'll make sure it's a comfortable look. Right. Okay, see Bye. you, Scott. Bye. Bye. Oh, that was lovely. That was really good fun. Um, right. That's uh, what's the venture style going to be? Like, what's its purpose? Somebody's asking. Well, wouldn't you like to know? I guess you'll find out in the finale. Right. Let's bring Dennis on. I have a little chat ask if he's ready first i'm surprised i'm able to build the uh the venture star as coherently as i am whilst chatting to people because normally my brain turns into sludge when i'm chatting to anybody <laughs> i said are you ready and dennis goes let's see <laughs> so let's try okay we'll find out the hard way here we go let's say hello to the second patron hello dennis Hello. Hey, I can hear you. Surprise! I'm. I can hear my own voice through your microphone, though. Yeah, it's like <laughs> a radio stream. Show. I gotta shut down the radio first. Ah, uh, okay. That's there a little. Go. That's a little jarring. I'm hearing my own voice coming through the stream. <laughs> how's it? Uh, how's it going? Yeah, I'm doing fine. Busy weekend, as we talked about, but. Oh uh, uh, yeah. No but, problem. Um... Yeah, well, okay, uh, tell me a little about yourself. So, whereabouts are you from? So, what are you doing in general? So, I'm Dutch. Mm -hmm. Start with that. Uh, 28, year old, 28 years old. Uh, I'm an uh, engineer. 
Oh yeah. Also. Also. So, uh, yeah, just uh, finished up uh, biotechnology mm-hmm. down here and uh, got called in uh, for a nice job in a recycling plant. That's been going well, but very busy. So uh, I had to make some time free on my uh, Saturday evening to uh, be there, be here. But uh, it's good fun. Well, thank you so much for coming. Um, yeah, it'd be cool. really, really nice to chat to you. Yeah, I'm a fellow engineer as well, so... <laughs> yeah, it's one of the stuff. reasons I uh, decided to uh, help you out a bit. You know? Yeah. Well, if you have any suggestions for my Venture Star, um, <laughs> do let me know. <laughs> uh, it's currently going Ooh, I mean, okay, I think. I mean, uh, you're basically becoming a rocket scientist, as far as I uh, could tell. Uh, yeah. It sounds like good bit, good business to me. I mean, I'm trying, I'm trying my best. Uh, <laughs> you know, I haven't graduated yet. Um, yeah. How far along are you? Um, so I'm redoing my third year since I had medical problems. Um, yeah. So it's an integrated master's, so it's four years. So got another, got another year to go, and then. Oh, uh, but that's no problem then. Yeah, yeah, but uh, it's going pretty well actually. So, you know, fingers crossed. I'll, I'll graduate next year. Um, yeah. As as, and then you know, what? Are you gonna join the British uh, space program or? Uh... Uh, well, we'll see. We just have to see who offers me a job, I guess, because um, you know it's certainly no given that, uh, that they'll actually they will offer me one. Um, but you know that would be the dream. That would be wonderful. Um, yeah, I mean, I think the ideal thing would be to work somewhere like Surrey Satellites. Um, you know, one of the maybe one of the smaller companies. Um, somewhere that's actually you know actually like probably in the industry the uk space agency itself it's mainly regulatory stuff it does like approving stuff that gets shot into space and and that sort of stuff as for actually like you know launching their own missions or whatever it's just it's really just a lot of diplomacy and a lot of legal stuff um that they do um you oh, really yeah, want to go work really for... enthusiastic, enthusiastic. <laughs> <laughs> no like you, you want to go work for somewhere like airbus defense in space or, or sorry satellites that's that's the sort of area that i'd be really really interested in i think would be really cool um so you're yeah. uh, really into the assembly part yeah yeah i mean yeah so the longer i've done the course the the more i've learned about which part and which part of the you know industry i'd like to work in i think um and really uh the bits that i've been enthralled with have been um mainly software side of things actually surprisingly enough um and anything to do with electronics and also propulsion um so anything to do with sort of thermodynamics propulsion that sort of stuff i found like the stuff that i hate i think is really boring uh oh, anything to do with materials anything to do with like dynamic like structures um like physical structures and things um i yeah. think is dull as dishwater <laughs> to be honest um, well, I mean, the majority the is the reverse of you, so that's a good prospect then. Yeah, yeah, well, you'd think so. Oh, someone's just donated. Sure. Andrews, donate. How long do you plan streaming for? Busy right now, but I have to jump on the stream, depending how long it's going for. Uh, so I'll just reply to Andrew, Andrew quickly. Um, I think the stream will yeah. probably go until 10, maybe a little bit later, depending how many people I'm chatting to. Probably probably 10, maybe half 10. Uh yeah, if if you want to do later, that, that that works fine, Andrew. Sorry, uh, I've now completely lost my train of thought as to what we were talking about because Andrew rudely gave me a donation. <laughs> um, the audacity. The audacity, but, uh, I know, right. Well, I mean, uh, we were just talking about uh, your prospects and your passions, and uh, yeah, it's yeah, fun to hear. Yeah, um, uh, yeah, yeah, I was saying, yeah, it's materials. Just, uh, yeah. yeah, there's such a shortage of uh, software engineers just everywhere right now. Oh, really? Yes, yes. Industrial software engineers. Um, and I do believe that in space you would have roughly the same parts and programs. But yeah, there's a huge shortage. If you go into that, I mean, you can just ask whatever you want, basically. Oh, stonks, I guess. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, um, definitely. I mean, it's too difficult for me to wrap my hand uh, head around the mm-hmm. the essentials. So it's not for me. But yeah. the guys that are in there are, yeah, they're making good business at the moment. Hmm. Well, yeah, I'm not sure so, that. Um, 
Oh, I don't know. I'm not sure I'd want to actually go into software engineering specifically. Um, uh, I don't know. Maybe that I sort mean, that sort of space, part of the space parts. Well, yeah, you need uh, space software engineers, I guess, don't you? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, if you look at satellites right now and their instruments, uh, the, the Netherlands are uh, quite specialized in those uh, sensors and uh, that technology behind that. Hmm. And uh, I mean, if there's a shortage in the industry as a whole, I can imagine in space as well. Everybody wants to build the engine, but nobody wants to <laughs> program it. <laughs> well, Basically. I mean, look at Starliner, right? Uh, near Boeing's mission yeah like, it was all software problems wasn't it like yeah the, but uh... it, it's the shortage so yeah. if that's your passion then you've got a bright future ahead of you oh, oh. that's, so good, that's to know, good to actually. hear yeah well good a good bit of insight actually yeah thanks for telling me that yeah, no um, problem yeah i'm just i'm having a look at, look at my venture star right now it's just <laughs> it's not quite looking uh, <laughs> like the picture I'm staring. I, mean, I guess uh, it just needs to take inspiration. Let's say, right? it, let's say it like this: it's a good thing that your future lies in the software side of things. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying my best. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I can't um, imagine uh, double double tasking, uh, both talking to and uh, building a thing honestly, at the same time. Yeah, like it's the reason yeah. why I, I usually don't stream like a lot of people ask why i don't always stream builds it's like it'll take three times as long and usually like even when i did like the clark build stream i had to um afterwards go back and do all the actual stuff that required any <laughs> any coherent thought you know yeah required yeah, to use definitely. my brain because um, <laughs> yeah, it was yeah it was just absolutely frazzled the uh the venture star as coherently as i am whilst i can hear my own voice through your uh <laughs> I was trying to uh, look up where you went wrong, but uh... <laughs> no, I think it's looking okay. It's 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 because like it's so huge, I can't zoom out, so it makes things a little harder. Um, but yeah, I think I think there this is go. about the right dimensions. I'm just looking at shots of it from Avatar. It's only in the opening sequence. Should I see how far the engines extend past the fuel tanks? It's not much. You just get a yeah, few it's... short shots. Of it. Considering like how short how you know tiny the little segment it's in is yeah, right yeah. like the fact that it's as well thought out and as well designed as it is, is is pretty incredible like the amount of thought that went into the design of this thing um yeah you can imagine that there's uh, somebody really trying to make it yeah logical it Instead makes a lot of, like of sense the... the design i mean the amount as i said yeah. like you know considering it's, it's in the opening scene for what about 30 seconds and yeah. it's like one of the best designed science like ftl ships in science fiction um, yeah definitely i crazy. love the, the 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 tension game yeah i know like the fact you know almost all the fiction you, know, you have the engines at the back the whole idea of using putting it in a tractor tractor configuration is really really cool um, yeah it's uh, like the uh, we have to develop past uh, traditional ship building basically it's just mm. a bit it's as if we are all thinking about uh, propellers still but yeah, cool. yeah on the other hand if i see the cones of our oh. uh, rockets as they are now it would be quite difficult to get this in reality right i need to look I, at like I, what truss segments i have to see if i can replicate its sort of tapering truss yeah. i think i i can actually I, with the wonders of tweak scale wouldn't it be at a slight angle those engines pointing outward yeah so they are a, a slight angle um so they avoid the, the exhaust doesn't hit the crew cabin but i'm going to deal with that later i'm just <laughs> i'm just going to build it first and then yeah. and then figure yeah. that out how big can i make these trusses oh perfect okay this, this will that work. sounds very responsible yeah um, we'll figure that part out later <laughs> trust me i'm an engineer <laughs> i know what i'm doing um yeah this will work. Okay. Uh, cool. I'm just wondering how to attach some of these things because not all of them have attachment points. Um, hmm. I think I'll just attach it radially and then just clip it into the main structure and see what happens. Yeah, this is this is the guy you want designing your uh, interstellar spacecraft. For sure. <laughs> Interesting thing, this is actually going to be quite a dangerous spacecraft to operate. I need to look at the antimatter storage tanks and stuff quite carefully because you can actually calibrate them like you can make them much much lighter if you set the amount of acceleration they have to endure 
um oh, here we go so they've got like a they've got a maximum acceleration they've got a ma they have to be continuously powered um you know there's a bunch of different things you can do to make them explode <laughs> so there is an actual danger of the antimatter tanks uh Who knew on um, antimatter would be so difficult yeah <laughs> <laughs> i just think it's fun that the the, the mod actually models it you know because obviously you know you can do your own role play or whatever like oh you got to be careful in case the antimatter explodes but here it's like no it will actually explode and will Kill actually everyone. go if you overpower yeah. it yeah that's careful. very cool yeah um, i've got to start getting into kerbal space grow a program someday but i hardly have time to watch guys let alone play so <laughs> when was the first uh first one of my videos that you watched if you, if you can remember oh that's uh, quite easy but uh, when i was uh, i got uh, yeah starstruck basically by the flight tests of um uh, what's it called Big spaceship, the BFR. Um, the Clark, that one, or there have been a few. No, no, in reality. Oh, in uh, reality. Space oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, Starship, right? Uh, yes, that one. I thought you were talking so about my I, spacecraft. Uh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, when I saw those belly flops, etc., it got me hyped up. And then I saw that uh, Kerbal Space Program had a, a reality mod. Hmm. And then I started looking for series, and uh, your uh, collaboration with N9 just came out. And I, I uh, started looking those uh, up on the big TVs around sound and just enjoying them massively. And oh, I really? just got caught up exactly at the episode where you explained your uh, back problems. Oh. That's how I ended up uh, Patreon. I just got uh, caught in the mood, and I thought, uh, engineer, young guy, right future, good series. Let's just. Uh, help him through well, thank you so that's how i came so that's how it uh, all went yeah then i got uh, busy and had hardly have time to uh, catch up but i plan to uh, uh, i plan to catch up uh, as soon as i can and just uh, have a nice movie night and uh, catch up to the series as far as we are now well you don't have to be in any rush <laughs> because uh <laughs> yeah it's gonna take a while to um yeah, like I'm finishing, I'm finishing this series, so Beyond Kerbal, um, before I, you know, before I go back to for all Kerbal kind. I, I say I've been, I've been sort of spinning a lot of plates for for quite a long time, so um, trying to cut down the number of series that I'm doing. So I finished Mars Horizon, that's all done and, and finished up, and I want to finish Beyond Kerbal, and then um, pretty much move away from the gaming stuff. Actually, um, I'll still be doing the Kerbal, but uh, focus more on on the engineering stuff and you know things relevant to to my degree and making the most of, of the things i'm learning if that makes any sense and and gear oh, cool. the channel more towards that so um, you're, uh, you're gonna direct a bit more towards the smarter everyday kind of uh, channel yeah yeah that sort of stuff but um you know stuff that nobody else has done before you know i've got loads of ideas for for things i was like oh i wonder if someone's done a video on this nope has anyone done a video on this nope and then i've got loads of these different ideas where i was like actually you know i could i could you know i'm actually qualified to talk about this stuff now and um, and nobody else has talked about it, so I've got a lot of uh, sort of plans of that of that ilk. Um, but I obviously need the time to be able to work on those. So it'd be nice to get down to just doing for all couple kind, and then those sort of things every now and then. Um, Keep up your uh, flagship, and then uh, expand out towards uh, what you like now. Yeah. Oh, yeah, and exactly. by the way, uh, Handeman in chat, I'm definitely Dutch. Uh, I sound Dutch as well. Can't help it. <laughs> learned english from irishman so i also start yelling a bit when i'm speaking english <laughs> learned speaking english in an irish pub so, are you sure you yeah. aren't friends with scott who was on last and he's an irish software engineer <laughs> you ended up touching a lot of the similar points <laughs> maybe 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 i Secretly might have friends. i might have had a drunk night with him in ireland could be uh, well possible oh never know well, i think um we're actually reaching the are we reaching the end of our time? How long? We, I don't know when how, when this call started. How long have we been on this call? Oh, uh, ten past. So we are. Uh, uh, about oh no! Actually, you've got plenty of time. No, I mean, ignore me. Yeah, <laughs> you, you, you wanted to uh, get stake in here as well. So I'll uh, give your uh, Corona adult voice uh, some rest, and you can uh, go on. Okay. Or if if you know, if you don't have any questions or anything, no, it's up to you if you want to stay on for a, for a little bit longer. I yeah. Um, I mean, struggling with time I had, a, I had a question about your uh, college and i asked it and uh, it's nice to know where your uh, passion is mm -hmm. well, uh, thank how you, you uh... plan to go on 
So well, thank you so much cool. for joining and thank you so much for all your support. And yeah, it's been a really nice chat. I was actually kind of worried. Like, where, <laughs> I was like, let's bring the patrons on. Obviously, I don't, you know, know any of it's you. The like, are they just going to go on and start making weird noises? Or <laughs> I don't know. You're always so, uh, so polite, but you still think the people uh, supporting you uh, are actually trolling. No, but, uh, I just, I just, to be too humble. used to the internet, I guess. <laughs> just too much time on the internet, you know. Um, yeah, yeah. I, mean, I guess that would make a cynic out of everybody. <laughs> yeah, that's that's the one way of putting it, I guess. Um, <laughs> but yeah, no, it's been a lovely chat. This has been a lot of fun. Um, yeah, well, I'm really enjoying this. The streak uh, going. I'd yeah, say. yeah, I'm sure steak yeah, will ruin fun. it whenever steak comes on. Um, <laughs> but, you know, have to see who's after. Yeah, I think uh, Olaf is after you, but Olaf isn't uh, on until well, is on for another about ten minutes or so. So. Um, well, you know, if you want to keep chatting, we can, but otherwise we can, yeah, it's up to you. I um, know <laughs> you're a busy person. In all honesty, I do have to get back to uh, coding uh, now. What are you working I mean, on at the moment, if you don't mind me asking? What I'm doing at the moment, yeah. uh, safety review. And basically, just as you are planning to uh, change the alignment of your engines later, uh, there were some kinks in our uh, startup program of our recycling installation. Ah. And uh, nobody bothered to put it in the right order. So now I have to change my uh, startup sequence. Well, best of luck with that. Yeah, it's going to be a rough one. but. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think they're in, uh, they're in good hands, clearly. Oh, well, thank you very much. And uh, I think the spaceship will be in good hands as well. Well, I hope so. It's starting to look <laughs> the part, though, to be fair. I'm... I'm pretty happy with that. It's coming together. Um, oh, uh, I'm going to be looking from the... I'll have it on, on my uh, second screen. Okay, keep a close eye on it. Well, thank you so much for joining. And uh, yeah, I'm sure we'll chat another time if you want to join in a game yeah. night or something. We'll, we will have one eventually. Yeah, it would be so fun. I'll chat to you then. Okay, lovely to, lovely to meet you, Dennis, and uh, talk to you another time. Okay. okay, I'll be seeing you. Okay, see you. Bye. Yeah. Bye. Oh man, my patrons are so lovely. Aren't they lovely? Aren't my, aren't my patrons lovely, Ellie? You haven't heard any of them because you're dying on the sofa and I have headphones on, but... Are you alright? Oh, okay. She's she's dying. I've given her every kind of lurgy. <sighs> okay. Um, I'm actually going to take a very quick break because I need to get a drink and Ellie is dying slowly behind me uh so <laughs> i'll be back in um in just a couple of minutes i need a little break as well because my you know i do have covid my voice needs a little break uh but then we'll bring on olaf in uh, just a couple of minutes so it won't be long okay see you guys then
and we're back. Oh, thanks to thanks to Dennis for letting me take a little break there because we're on a relatively tight schedule because I want to talk to everybody, but I needed to have a little rest and check that Ellie wasn't dying. I feel kind of bad because I did give her <laughs> did give her COVID. Um, not that it was really my fault. You need to be so careful, can't you? You know, I caught it last Thursday. Uh, and I was doing daily tests because of all my rehearsals and everything. And then, you know, I didn't test positive until Monday. So everyone I saw between Thursday and Monday, I infected. But, you know, asymptomatic and you're testing every day. There's only so much you can do. Alas. Anyway, let's bring on our next guest, which is Olaf. All right, let's ask him if he's ready. Ask them if they're ready, I guess. Don't want to assume anyone. Anyone's gender? Olaf says, as I'll ever be. And that's the kind of attitude we like. Okay, let's give him a ring. Ring, ring. Hello, Olaf. Hello. Hello, how's it going? Oh, it's nice, thank you. Thank you for Quite coming nice. on the stream. Welcome. Well, so, of course. Um, yeah, so how's it going? So where are you from? What do you what do? You do? <laughs> what do I do? Uh, I'm from Germany, from the north of Germany. And uh, I notice uh, some sort of a, a consistency here because I'm also an engineer. <laughs> <laughs> I'm noticing a pattern here. Not gonna lie. Yeah, good, quite a bit. I'm a mechatronics engineer from the automotive industry. Oh, awesome. So, so uh, yeah, maybe Scott writes the software and I do the hardware and you make it fly. We could, we could literally like form a band or something. Like, damn, <laughs> this, this, is re this really is becoming a, a pattern. <laughs> Um. Yeah, it's quite weird. I have a theory. <laughs> For maybe, maybe <laughs> it's because we engineers like to hear a uh, uh, starting engineer to uh, well talk about the technical side of spacecraft. Yeah, I mean to be fair, I mean yeah, you know, I I I guess I like I make the kind of content that that I would like to watch, so it makes sense that <laughs> people who are like me would uh, would be enjoying yeah. it. Though. Um, yeah, yeah, so where are you working at the moment? Then that what you're up to? I'm uh, working at the, nobody knows it, <laughs> it's the third biggest automotive supplier in the world. And uh, I'm making the most boring products of all time, uh, tie rods for cars. Ah, I mean, important there, so. Yeah, they are, they are. That's the safety critical part, but, uh, well, I survey them and uh, build the machines, or plan the machines that build these parts. So, yeah. <laughs> Oh, cool. Awesome. So, wait, how, do you mind me asking how old you are? Like, I'm um, tw 26. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, like, when was the first time you saw my channel and popped in? Because you used to hop in on the uh, on the Stellaris streams, didn't you? I remember you used to donate. Yeah, I did. Uh, I did. I did. I think that, that was the first there. time I donated at the Stellaris streams. But uh, the, I think the first video I watched was the first collaborative warfare one. Oh really? Long time fan then, yeah. Yeah, it's a long, a long time ago. I think it was twenty sixteen. Okay, or something. yeah. I mean, I, I, they started making it in twenty fifteen. Um, yeah, yeah, about that. A um, buddy of mine uh, told me, "Hey, there's this guy from England that does the that makes a strategic." A campaign player out of KSC, and I was like, "What? Let's have a look at that." <laughs> Who's this mad man? What's he doing? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. And then, uh, of course, uh, Fall of Corbin uh, joined after that. That was quite nice. And I've been basically watching every single video since then. It's a nice form of oh, no relaxation way. after a workday. <laughs> oh, great! Well, yeah, long time before. Thanks for thanks for watching. I'm glad you enjoyed it. Yeah, really. Not like collaborative warfare was actually. Uh, a product of me having my tonsils removed because although you have you know it's not a ma really a major piece of surgery because you've like lost an organ your whole body freaks out i don't know if you've had your tonsils taken out or not but you're, you're really really ill for for at least 10 days or so so uh, i was like stuck I, on the sofa and i i basically ran out of youtube and that was when i discovered reddit <laughs> and um <laughs> i think scott manley had just made his, he just made a video on Kerbin side talking about, you know, saying, oh, look, you can make bases all over Kerbin. Um, like the, that mod had just come out. And I just discovered, I used to watch like Macy Dean back in the day, but I just discovered um, World War K and like BD Armory hmm. and that sort of stuff. And so I was like, wait a minute, you know, what if, uh, you know, what if you 
you know, gave everyone a few bases and then yeah and then i went and read it and i just went wanted ksp youtubers and i messaged a bunch of youtubers and and the rest is history really um but yeah it was just a product for me having loads of time because i had nothing else to do <laughs> um how much work did you put on planning that out because i remember it was a bit chaotic <laughs> <laughs> so yeah collaborative warfare um like, all the effort really we just went into finding the youtubers um that was that was the difficult part of that um really and um so that was you know what all the work went into but once once i found the youtubers and just getting youtubers who who would do it um we just made a skype chat i made the world and i was like right just plant a flag each year bases make some kind of defensive thing and then you can launch two craft a turn and we'll start blowing each other up like that was it that was all of the planning that went into it and i think that shows like because then as soon as we started to get more competitive and get more into it like we started massively abusing like any broken thing we found <laughs> like, and just going absolutely crazy with it um I mean, remember got, um, three or four layers of armor plates and some <laughs> things like that because yeah. they wouldn't overheat. <laughs> yeah, uh, it got a little bit insane, um, which I think was part of its charm. I think that's something that people liked about it was just it was absolutely bonkers. Um, but yeah, when, when it sort of fell apart because it got so bonkers and we were going on these ridiculously long flights to like launch missiles. Like we were launching, building these massive planes and launching mi like missiles at. 12 different bases on like one bombing run and stuff it was all just who can make the longest range plane that can carry the most bombs because there was no limit on how many bombs you could carry <laughs> so he's making these ridiculous um aircraft but um yeah that was why you know after it, it just became far too much work and then agonarch um you know had a had a child um and couldn't make it anymore but obviously that's when me and tape did uh space race and then while we were making space race because we started space race it was supposed to just be something that would happen in between collaborative warfare episodes just because oh. we had more time than agonarch did we were like let's just do another series in the meantime like while we're you know and to have them both going on at the same time but then obviously that it all sort of fell apart um but uh but yeah while we were doing that we were like okay well collaborative warfare has fallen apart so why don't we just you know um what if we did something that had like tech progressions we could have biplane battles and you know then it sort of evolved from there if you I think if you go back into the old space race videos actually um like there's me talking about oh yeah me and tape have been chatting about you know what if we what if we did this and whatever and some people yeah. taking the timestamp and going and going ah and so for all <laughs> for all kerfin was born um <laughs> and yeah anyway so that was sort of like the the progression of that um in comparison to collaborative warfare a lot of thought went into fall of Kerbin. Uh, yeah <laughs> like a lot of time so that was um so that was when i was in my a levels and um yeah I, I used my sort of free um free periods quite well so i i always did all my homework and everything you know during school time so most evenings i had entirely free um so I'd, i'd spend most evenings working on it um and even then it was like one episode maybe every 10 days or something like that maybe every two weeks that's how much effort i was able to put into it just from the amount of time i had i mean i, I think back and i'm like my goodness me like <laughs> i had so much time it was amazing um yeah like a lot of thought went into that particularly into the rules like i love the fact that you know i i made this ridiculously comprehensive rule set and then tape would always find a way to break it right like he'd always find some broken ass weapon or something some loophole <laughs> that he could use um it's really it was really irritating actually that i kept making you know these rules and then tape would break them Uh, so we had this thing like if you find a broken rule on your turn then you have to let the other person use it and then we'll fix it so that's what we always did like i if i found something broken i go oh take this is broken um but you can use it for one turn before i i ban it and then he'd always use it like absolutely abuse the hell out of it i remember there was this chain gun this 50 cal chain gun which we realized was way too accurate and i blew up like one plane with it and i was like oh take this is too accurate so I'll, i'll i'll nerf it but i'll wait till you have a turn with it because i did blow up a plane and he used planes with that gun to destroy my like entire air force right <laughs> like <laughs> he like named his episode airborne massacre and blows up my whole air force and then because oh. i like then banned it then people were like oh okay so whenever tactics work you know beardy bans them and it's like well, i was <laughs> i was the one that <laughs> that found out that it was broken you know um yeah so like yeah there I, were a few there were a few updates to the rules along the uh, along the way there were a remember lot, that yeah. yes <laughs> so remember the the rules were were available for people to download and, and they, they would change uh they would change quite a bit actually um 
yeah that was that was a lot of fun though that series um it was great the fact that just we both had enough time to do it you know um yeah. so it, we could keep it coming out relatively regularly like we could think about the the strategies and you know it was it was it was a rapidly evolving series it's a similar way to, to for all Kerbal kind i guess you know is in that it always had a constant um conversation you know people were talking about strategies and and craft to design and um yeah it was like a very active yeah. community as well i think that was the that was the the series that really grew the grew the community i guess to the to the place it yeah, is maybe, today maybe. um but yeah i remember during this time uh, i had a buddy and we were both playing ksp and we saw your channel and then we um we thought started to think hey, well maybe we can do a similar thing in a different location on kerbin or something like this mm -hmm. and then we actually started to look at how much work that would be <laughs> and since, since <laughs> that's we're where all studying, of them die <laughs> yeah yes 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 i was actually building an electric race car at that moment and that was a lot of work and so i didn't start my own youtube channel <laughs> but i yeah. support yours since the then, number so. of um the number of projects like people have asked me like permission which i think has been really nice actually but they've been like oh is it cool if i you know if i if i take this and make my own version of it you know, using the mod pack that i made or, or whatever and using my rule sets and i was going like yeah yeah go for it um and they've always been like okay yeah <laughs> they're always really ambitious they're like yeah okay so we're going to make sure that people get their turns done on time and we have a really regular upload schedule i and basically make like a a series inspired by it and there have been a few of those there was like the war there was one called rip off collaborative warfare there was one called kerbal combat and i watch all of them i enjoy them none of them have gone past turn two not a single one because <laughs> they, they always then realize just how much work it is and just how much time it takes and like the actual playing the game there are little moments there are always moments right like the, the dog fights and stuff that there are really really good fun um but the actual the amount of work it takes to set things up and stuff, it's not really fun playing the game it's i think i remember kerbal rising was the ultimate epitome of this it was maybe like 10 hours of work for like to set stuff up that didn't even go on camera for maybe like one hour of recording and then you'd edit that down like speed it up by eight times since the frame rate was so bad into like one 20 minute video um, you, you can't really go into this <laughs> expecting to have fun playing the game right? exactly right <laughs> the fun part of it the fun part of it was the community it created and and you know and the comments and, and watching tapes video like because i enjoyed the series as well like i enjoyed watching his but someone once was like oh you shouldn't watch tapes videos because it gives you an unfair advantage like knowing what he's working on it's like bro <laughs> <laughs> that's the one fun part <laughs> i don't take it that seriously right like, it's a bit of... <laughs> um yeah so it's, like it does amuse me like in a, in a maybe a cruel way but like no i don't want to say rip off series but no like f the series that's taken inspiration for it has ever got any further than turn two because they're like oh crap like this is actually this is actually really difficult um yeah like i i couldn't do it today like the number of people who, who have asked me to to bring back the warfare stuff and honestly like i would love to but you know i just don't have the time right like I barely even have time to do um, Full Cable Kind, which is the reason why I'm you know, bringing all these series to an end and trying to free myself up so I can do some new projects. But um, yeah, you you really would have to do this as a daytime job, right? Oh, and yeah, then uh, I don't think it really pays that much. So <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't pay at all. <laughs> really. yeah. Well, that's why you know people like uh, people like you are, are supporting me, and you know it's it's why it's so deeply appreciated. I, I think I said in the last well, like Beyond Kerbal, I was like. I think people maybe some people took the message the wrong way. I was saying that some people have Patreons, which you know they don't live on them, and that irritates me. It, it wasn't. Um, it's it, some people like reference YouTubers and stuff who who need the funds in order to make the the videos they're making, and and you know, and that that's not what I was sort of talking about. I was more talking about like minimal effort gaming YouTube, who sort of like in a in a similar way to me, and that do it as a hobby, um, but have full time jobs that support them and have patreon tiers that go up to like 50 pounds or something a month and it's like i don't know it just makes me feel a little uncomfortable to be like asking it for that much support you know it starts to feel themselves. a bit immoral at that point right exactly right it's almost like it's just taking what you can get um you know I, like, I, I didn't set one up for such a long time because i you know if, if i i was like well i don't you know like like the, the money i was getting from it's not much but the, you know, the amount i was getting from the ad revenue it was just pocket money and i was like if i was getting money from patreon it would just be pocket money and i would like this is these are voluntary donations right like i would 
you know, it would just not feel right. Um, sort of asking asking for that. You know, anything more than like a one pound fifty tier for pizza or something. You know, but I think people who are like who make us <laughs> who make like a small tier and make it clear, like this is a donation that's not asked for but appreciated. You know, I'll probably spend it on pizza. Like I'm like cool, <laughs> awesome. Like that's <laughs> that's great. You know, it's the people who are like, you know, thank you for my patron. Like do the whole spiel, but. I don't know. It just seems like in bad faith. I'm not going to name any names. Like, <laughs> but yeah. do you know what I mean? Do you know what I mean? Like, I think some people got um, the wrong idea when I was talking about that. But oh, maybe. Um, well, oh, sorry, that's Ellie I'm, in the background. <laughs> I'm, I'm glad there's a possibility to support your channel like this. Well, thank yeah. Well, thank you so much for for doing it. You know, as I said, like it doesn't it doesn't go unappreciated. Like it, it's really appreciated. <laughs> um, that might also be a reason why they're mainly up to now engineers uh, that support your channel. Because we have the money to do so. <laughs> <laughs> well, I hope one day I'll have the money to do so. Fingers crossed. Um, well, you're so, you're the supported one at this moment. So. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, what I'd love to do is, you know, is, as soon as I'm earnest, is, is, is support. We're going to need all the breathing Sp oh, someone's donated. Hello. Ratamizia. Is that Rat Ratamizia? Saw the stream decided to drop in. Also convinced me to join the Patreon. So cheers. Oh, thank you so much. Oh, that's lovely. Um, yeah, I was saying what I'd love to do is once, as soon as I'm supporting myself, as soon as I'm graduated, I, I will definitely probably just have the Patreon go down to the one pound tier um, if I keep it at all. And then I'd like to actually support other you know, smaller YouTubers doing similar stuff to me. Um, you know, I'd love to support people. Uh, I'm trying to think of particular YouTubers. Uh, I don't know if Carnassa will still be in uh, will still be in, in uni at that time. But, you know, people like Kanasa and, you know, other like KSP YouTubers and people that I, I really watch and enjoy who aren't, oh. you know, who similarly really appreciate um, well, that's a nice idea. patron support, right? Like, I think it's just a lovely thing to, to be able to do. Um, so giving giving back to the community a bit. Yeah, so, I like, you know, as I say, it's made such a, you know, such a difference to me because, as I say, I've been able to continue doing what, what I enjoy, what I enjoy doing and, actually be able to just about support myself on it and that's only due to the due to the patreon support and you know people like you so yeah <laughs> i'd love to be able to to do that for someone else you know as i said like it's meant it's meant so much to me um yeah oh, that's really really nice so that's that's the cycle it you've started on <laughs> so you can you can <laughs> Oh, I feel so validated now. <laughs> <laughs> Is this worth your <laughs> your fifteen pounds a month? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was. There's a um, a small proposition I have to make to you. Oh yeah, go for um, it. because uh, a friend of mine and I we uh, built, being German of course, we built a beer brewing station, mm -hmm. and brew our own beer. And oh. if there is a parcel shop nearby you, I'd like to send you some. <gasps> oh, I'd like, I could do an unboxing video. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. a boxing video of your prayer. <laughs> yeah, that'd be great. Um, no, I can send you. I'll send you the details if you want. Yeah, go for it. That'd be awesome. Because he brews beer and I brew meat, so honey wine. And uh, well, we, we brew the beer, putting those together. Maybe it's to your taste. Yeah. Oh no, I'd really appreciate that. Yeah, I think I mentioned a bit like. Um, so I don't eat meat, but that's just a taste thing. So it, it, you know, any animal products stuff, I'm, I'm I'm fine with. Um, so yeah. Okay. No, it's, yeah. It's. Yeah. It's uh, uh, what's it called in English? Bio uh, organic quality honey, maybe. Oh, okay. Yeah, it? well, yeah, that's, that's fine. Yeah. So. Um, yeah, I remember like, I know some vegans are okay with honey, some aren't. Um, yeah, my my brother's my things? brother's a vegan, so I have a lot of experience in this uh, yeah, topic. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And I also I also only buy, well. Uh, organic quality or bio quality uh, meat. Mm. I'm also a hunter, so I shoot my oh. own meat sometimes. So, <laughs> oh, cool. Yeah, no, I'd love that. I really appreciate that. Yeah. Okay. If you send me the details, I'll send you a box. I will. Might do. take a few yeah. days or weeks, but. Oh, that's perfect. I won't. Uh, I won't dox myself on stream. <laughs> I'll send you the details later. <laughs> um, no, that yeah, of course, great. of course. That sounds awesome. No, that sounds yeah, nice. Idea. Nice. I have to call it penguin meat or something. So. <laughs> <laughs> no, I do appreciate. I do appreciate good alcohol. Um, yeah, it's 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 quite interesting because um, so back home we've got like quite posh neighbours, um, and they they always buy like really weird and wonderful expensive alcohol, and when they don't like it, they give it to my mum, and if she doesn't like it, then she gives it to me. So I I keep getting these like bottles of really strange like. <laughs> um, really 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 like ridiculously expensive like tequilas and whiskeys and and things and um 
Yeah, it's, that's <laughs> some, so I've developed yeah. like an expensive taste for alcohol, but never paid but, for it myself. Well, there are mm. weird spirits out there, aren't there? <laughs> like, yeah, big time. I think I once have an, had a Mongolian whiskey or something. I that had, was weird. Um, <laughs> I had, what was it? I think it was... Um, I'm trying to think of an, it wasn't parsnip. It was a oh, turnip. That was I think it was turnip, turnip gin. It was awful. Like I couldn't, I didn't stop tasting it for like four hours, and it was terrible. I couldn't get rid of the taste. <laughs> <laughs> it was terrible. But I, like I can say that I've ta- I've tasted it now. Um, oh, Jato Rato just tipped four twenty. Thank you. You should add. You should add jet assisted takeoff slash rocket assisted takeoff to the venture star. There it is. There's the obligatory comment. <laughs> Thank you for the donation. Uh, I mean, this does have antimatter rockets on it, so I mean, it doesn't take off because it's built in space. But uh, you know, I guess it. Uh, <laughs> I guess it does kind of have rocket assisted takeoff. Well. Maybe, sort of. I don't know. You'd, you'd need something like Project Orion to take this off the ground, I think. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm not sure this would survive Project Orion. <laughs> uh, um, it's a bit jumpy. <laughs> yeah, a little bit. I'm not sure this thing would even... I mean, look, I mean, look at the size of it. Like, Just like, how would you ever even launch this into space? Um, yeah. Well, um, I mean, I'm looking at the size of it now. I wonder if I'm going to be able to load this thing if it's going to be longer than two and a half kilometers long, but... Saying that, it's coming along. I'm actually pretty pretty proud of how this is looking, actually. It's starting to... Yeah, I don't know if you're looking at the, at the stream right now or not, but I think this is looking uh, looking pretty cool. Though I say so myself. <laughs> um, oh, Jato Rato is tipped oh. again. You know you want to do it. We aren't stopping you. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, did you have uh, do you have any more any more questions, Ola? So I, I've, you sort of launched me on a few uh, long tangents and, <laughs> and things. Um, well, not not really. I uh, I think I uh, heard your plans for the channel in the next uh, years, and uh, I think it's nice. I I, I mean, I, I love the Let's Play series like Mass Horizon. Oh, yeah, you watching Mass Horizon? Like, yeah. I'm watching. I'm watching quite frankly everything on your channel. Oh, really? So oh, <laughs> yes, yeah, yeah, it's. It's it's great, well, and uh, also also to boldly go, I'm very, I I I like those, but uh, mm. I appreciate you doing let's say more. Uh, oh, I need a trans- need a translator. More Maybe uh, more more, quali- more quality. <laughs> work. Yeah, yeah. So you said you will update uh, upload uh, sparsely. Uh, maybe every three weeks, four weeks, or something, but then a, a higher quality video. Yeah, yeah, uh, exactly. Instead of a let's play, well, I think that's a nice thought. I I hope the let's play videos don't die completely. No, they won't die time. completely. The the Kerbal stuff will will continue on, and I think it's just I didn't want to start any any new games, you know, um, anything like Mars Horizon and stuff, um, and things like that. Oh, okay. Um, oh, that's that's a bit sad. But you know, because... I'll try and I, I might do eventually. You know, I, I might. I might do them from time to time. I think it's just for the foreseeable future, really. Like, I don't have the time to... I just want to try something new for a bit, and I don't have the time to do both, if that makes sense. No, oh, okay. Um, yeah, it makes sense. But, um, but yeah, so that's the that's the plan. I think I think once you see the, the things that I'm, I'm working on, I, I don't think anybody will will mind oh, the man, shift away. Uh, but, you know, the Kerbal stuff will always, will always be continuing. You know, I'm never going to stop doing that. I'm not going to go like uh, full Marcus House and <laughs> start my own business and <laughs> make like proper well-researched videos or whatever. It's still always just going to be me and I'll still keep up the Kerbal. Um, yeah, I'll look forward to this. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, well, thank you for your support. I'm glad you enjoy everything. Um, to boldly go won't be back for the foreseeable future. I haven't spoken to you and in quite a long time. All the last videos were actually recorded last September. I only just got around to editing them because <laughs> I've had so little time. Um so I haven't spoken to him like properly now in uh, in well over six months. So um, we'll see about that. I, I would like to at least land on the moon and, and do a few things in that series. <laughs> I would like to sort of come to a, fi- a fitting conclusion. I don't want to end it like having like just being about to build the moon rocket. <laughs> right? That's uh, <laughs> not a good place to leave it. Um, but yeah, I'll, I'll be sure to let you know about that. Um, yeah, sounds good. Yeah, I think um, mm-hmm. I'll bring. I'm going to bring steak on now. So it's been lovely talking to you. Um, been lovely talking to everyone. Actually, everyone's everyone's been really, really. I don't know why I was nervous about, <laughs> about it. I guess it's just 
I haven't spoken to any, any anyone before. That's um, been quite nice. So I'll make place for the next engineer in line. <laughs> I don't know if that's an engineer or not. Uh, if, <laughs> we'll uh, see. We'll see. Drinking game. Take a shot every time one of my patrons is an engineer. Oh, um, <laughs> that would be a bad idea. <laughs> we'll find out. Um, maybe just take a sip of your of your lovely beer every time. Yeah, we'll receive it in a few weeks. Yeah, also, okay. well, I'll, I'll give it a test. I'll test it on stream. I'll test it on XCOM stream. That'll be fun. Oh, oh wow. Yeah, that would be fun. Live, yes, I will. live I'll tasting session while Ellie's shooting aliens. That'd be fun. Oh, then I'll need to send you a big supply. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't say no. Right, lovely talking to okay. you, Olaf. And, uh, yeah, well, it was lovely. Yeah, have I'll a good night. I'll watch. Time. Yeah, see you another time. Bye. Okay, bye. This has been lovely. I'm so glad I decided to do this. This has been really, really heartwarming. Oh, man. Lovely just talking to people who, you know, just been long-time viewers of the channel and actually know what I'm talking It's just like to talk to a real person, right, who who understands, you know, the stuff I'm making, the stuff I'm working on. Because obviously none of my friends, <laughs> you know, most of my friends aren't interested in any of this sort of, this sort of stuff. And, you know, just to, to know the history of the channel and so be part of that history and i don't know it's just strangely humbling in a way to just i don't know i don't want to sound like up myself or anything but like oh, just to have had a had had an effect on someone's life and i don't know it's it's yeah it's really really lovely i'm just gonna have a little sip of chamomile mm. and address the latest donations because we had a couple of donations while i was chatting to Olaf, and i don't, I don't want to cut them off because i was enjoying that conversation so much um right we've got pika six uh, actually, I need to open Streamlabs to see these full donation messages because they are a little too long for the preview window. Where are my Streamlabs at? There it is. Okay. Bear with me, guys. I'm just going to go to Streamlabs and, and talk to some of these people who've been kind enough to leave donations. Don't worry, I haven't, I haven't missed your donation. I would never miss a donation. Okay. Tips. Do, 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 do. Tip history. Here we go. Expand the page out a bit. Okay. So we had Legend Link said hello from Maple Syrup Land. We had Andrew uh, Ratamizia, who's joined the Patreon. Thank you very, very much. We had Jato Rato, <laughs> which I think I did mention. Yeah. You know, you want to do it. We aren't stopping you. Yeah. Mm. I think the basic laws of physics are stopping me adding a uh, jet assisted takeoff to this thing. But uh, thank you for the thought. Uh, thank you for the donations. Very kind. Uh, Pika 6 again. You know, you could do away with RCS and reaction wheels if you make this spin stabilized. Um, I mean, it's going to have to orient itself towards new stars and turn around and decelerate and the like. And it's going to be crude as well. So we can't really spin the entire thing. I tend to have some centrifuges. So um, perhaps not but <laughs> yeah i'm not sure yeah if it was if it were uncrewed and it just had to fly by another star you could absolutely make it spin stabilized um yeah but since it's a crude vessel which needs to decelerate at the other end i'm not entirely sure that will work but thank you for the donation pika then we had james n42 do you ever plan to make any sort of video about how you go about designing spacecraft in ksp um i mean beyond the build stream that i'm currently on where i'm just looking at a picture and building it <laughs> um, i don't know it depends on the craft doesn't it i mean i've done some build time lapses and for all kerbal kind um and sort of tried to describe my thought process while working on those but uh i mean there's nothing really i don't want to say nothing special but it's you know nothing unique about how i build craft it's just it's just a lot of experience really uh, but thank you for the donation and we have another one from is that eight bar eight eight ball oh it's eight ball it's about with spelt with uh, numbers hello from yet another <laughs> space engineering student that grew up watching your videos anyway here's what i want to say beardy give it treads uh, did you get the i don't have any treads <laughs> pop up as well <laughs> that's appropriate <laughs> oh great oh free thinkers in chat hello you might want to use the antimatter beam core instead of a separate antimatter core attached to a magnetic nozzle antimatter beam core instead of a separate antimatter core attached to a let's have a little look I look at that before I bring steak on because steak is on next. Um, but let's have a look, look, look at the person who made the mod and what their suggestions are. Here we go. Reactors. This is, this is the beam core antimatter reactor that we've got, right? Yeah. 
which we paired with a with a magnetic nozzle. It's not. I think. I think we might already be doing what he suggested. And it's a beam core. Instead of a separate antimatter core attached to my, I, I, I'm not sure what that means. <laughs> I don't understand. Three thinkers mod is is very complicated. In that it's realistic, but here's the positron antimatter reactor. But that's is there like a an antimatter engine that I'm missing here? Let's have a little look. Beam. Beam fusion reactor. Mm, no, it seems to be the best way to do it. I don't know. Under the under engines. I don't know if I have it in my install. I might not have it in my install. Um, I did remove a lot of stuff <laughs> from uh, from KSP Interstellar to try and bring down the load times. I'm not sure I have it. If I go to magnetic nozzles. I don't think I have the beam. It might not might be in a more recent version of Interstellar as well. This is an old version, which I'm sure Freethinker is going to be angry at me about <laughs> about using an outdated version. Um, but I just I have a stable install, and it has yeah I haven't updated the version of KSP Interstellar in a in a long, 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 long time. And it doesn't need to be the most ideal solution either. Under the engine section, filter on engines. Let's just go to engines and have a little look through. But I'm pretty sure I don't actually have this. I must have removed it. Because I did remove a bunch of things, like, I don't want to say superfluous things, but things I didn't think I was ever going to use. Inertial fusion engine, plasma nozzle, plasma wake field accelerator engine. What is this one? Do do do. We'll have a little quick look through, but vast mirror engines, a pinch fusion engine. Yeah, it's not in here. Maybe it's in a more recent version. Olaf donated again. Oh, stop it, Olaf. It was lovely talking to you. First time on YouTube, running stream actually too. Looking forward to further content, and maybe game nights in the future. Yeah, absolutely. I'd love to do a Halo game night or something. Um, I will definitely figure that out. Maybe over Easter or something. Regardless, though, I've been nattering on enough. I have another sip of my chamomile that will bring steak on. Mm. Ah, chamomile, man. Makes the world go round. Okay. You ready? XOXO. I did definitely just send XOXO to one of my patrons. I'm not entirely sure why. <laughs> No response as of yet. I free think it said this should work as well. Okay, that's fine. Steak says ye uwu. Okay, I think that's a yes. <laughs> it's a marine. Hello, Steak. Hello. Hi. Have we ever actually spoken before? I don't think so. I think we have, no. Oh, how are you doing? I'm doing pretty all right. I've had to mute the stream because I hate the sound of my own voice. Oh, fair enough. I mean, as do I, and I'm a YouTuber, so, you know. <laughs> could be worse <laughs> does anyone like the sound of their own voice oh, pff, it's a fair point I don't think so to be honest um, regardless though how I said how are you how's it going I'm going pretty damn well see I was under the impression that you were from Texas for some reason and then I'm told that you were in Edinburgh so then I was very confused no I'm from uh, West Yorkshire Oh, West Yorkshire. So you're much closer to D Yorkshire. Hey up. Um... Yorkshire. Hey up. How you doing? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Bit eat. Bit eat. I used to have a music teacher who had a really thick. He was from Yorkshire. Oh. He was called Mr. Amazing. Brooke. Yeah, and he'd always go, "You can take Mr. Brook out of Yorkshire, but you can't take the Yorkshire out of Mr. Brook." Which was... that sounds about right. <laughs> Very entertaining. <laughs> Every time he did it, yeah. Um, so how's it going? So you're from Yorkshire, and uh, what, yep. are you, what are you doing with oh, your I'll life? I'll take a guess. Oh, God, it's not engineering, is it? Engineering. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, uh, Everyone I'm... take a shot. <laughs> I haven't got shots, but I've got some form of alcohol. To be fair, I've got shots. I could stop doing shots, but I have to design an interstellar spacecraft, so maybe it wouldn't be the most responsible <laughs> thing to do. Yeah, but you'd probably put like a really sick spoiler and flame patterns on it. Oh, don't tempt me. It would go faster. 
it would go faster. It's it's confirmed. It a spoiler on a on a vacuum spacecraft, it definitely does go faster. Yeah. Can confirm. Yeah, it's basic physics. That you paint it red, it goes faster as well. Yeah, basic physics. Basic physics. This guy if you paint it, it purple, you'll lose it. Is that is that a thing? <laughs> yes, because you've never seen a purple orc. So they're stealthy. Oh. That is okay. <laughs> but uh, that's food yes, for thought, I guess. Um, mechanical machine maintenance engineering. So, um, the boring one. Uh, okay. Of work in factory machine that makes things break. I fix machine. Well, wow, engineering, so, engineering, though. Guess oh, is everyone no I bring on going to be an engineer tonight? That's uh, going to be um. Nah. Is lags a lot an engineer? Nah. Oh, okay. There we go. We've got at least one non-engineer. That's all right. She's uh, she's letting the, the team down. I know, right? Oh, that was Ellie in the background. Just don't, think, just don't bring her on. I think, honestly, I think the reason why Lags a lot wants to come on stream is just to chat to Ellie, not to chat to me, and I can't really blame her. But um, <laughs> probably, that's if Ellie's yeah. less dead by then. But yeah, my t like all the XCOM streams have just been the two of them flirting. Aww, <laughs> cute. <laughs> I mean, we could flirt now. Beat them to, it. <laughs> to be fair, yeah, yeah, yeah. Make him jealous. Make him work for it. Someone else has just donated. Jato Rato, basic physics. You add, add, <laughs> add jet assist to take off or rocket assist to take off to make it go quicker. Well, Thank that's you advanced much. physics. That, that's far too advanced for me. Yeah, I'm only an engineer. I don't, I know, don't about know about that. That's stuff. theoretical physics. Yeah. See, the problem with KSP Interstellar, like, I think it's the biggest strength and maybe even the, the biggest weakness of KSP Interstellar as a mod is that it is so scientifically accurate in that if you don't know a lot about the subject, you have no clue what the hell you're doing. <laughs> like, mm -hmm. It's, uh, yeah, you have to like end up going through, what's the really good page with all the like atomic engines and stuff? There's a really good like website with all that stuff. You're asking the, the wrong escapes. person. Okay, yeah, the name escapes me. Um, I, I have to admit, my total playtime in KSP is 76 minutes. For real? Yep. And you watch my I channel? I just haven't gotten around to playing it yet. What? Really? Yep. I, I've been watching KSP content since episode one of World War K and just and um, never actually played the game much myself. Wow. Okay, that does actually... That does actually surprise well, me quite a bit. I didn't have like a functioning PC till about a year and a half ago. Right. So I didn't really. I mean, it's on Xbox, but who the fuck who wants to play <laughs> KSP on no one Xbox? No KSP on Xbox. Yeah. Oh, okay, um, well, that's crazy. Yeah, just haven't got around to it. I'll I'll play it at some point. We're it's on the list. The breathing apparatus for a dive this it's on the Oh, we got two donations in a. No, it lags a lot. It says SMH stealing steak from me. And I'm not just going for Ellie, you're great too. Oh, stop it. Stop it, you. She lies. She's just going for Ellie. <laughs> Using me to get to Ellie. <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't blame her. Simone is also tip. Thank you, Simone. Yay, Steak, you're my biggest fan. I am, also, I am also a fan of you, Simone, because you are one of my patrons. And you are yeah, but you're not the biggest fan. Uh, sorry, are we fighting over Simone now? Yeah. <laughs> All right. <laughs> 1v1 me in uh, Collaborative Warfare. Oh, oh, I haven't got enough playtime. <laughs> yeah, that's what I um, thought. <laughs> one view. Uh, let's play a game we've both played, Hearts of Iron 4. Hmm. I've never done com like, <laughs> competitive Hearts of Iron 4. I've always done it um, just, you know, you both, like, you all play as the Axis and take over the world, except one yeah, person plays as fascist Same. because they want to be special. Yeah. I've never actually fought oh. against someone because I don't think it's really that kind of game, but I mean, there's no reason, you no reason we couldn't, I guess. 1v1. Yeah. I mean, four. Whoever we'll wins gets Simone. I'll be Colombia. Simone gets you no can, say in this can, matter. I'll be Colombia. You can be India. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> it's a race who can build the first ship to uh, invade across the ocean to the yeah, other? Yeah, you can build one destroyer and just uh, race across. Yep, I see well, no it could be Argentina. I could be Colombia. We've got to fight through South America. Fight to the death. Oh, that would be fun. Guaranteed actually. to last an hour just walking troops from one side <laughs> to the other. Yep. I am I am entirely on board with this plan. Um, yeah. <laughs> I'm trying to figure out a way of like adding structure to this to this engine assembly like it has in just, the... Um, I think just, just a, few, struts. a few struts across actually works. Actually, works add well struts. Enough. As as useful advice for once in KSP. 
Yeah. Well, I mean, these are just Did giant add some boosters as well. Um, it doesn't need boosters. Look at the size of these engines. Oh, um... Come on. less <laughs> RBs. What are you smoking? <laughs> yeah, I remember it was when I was making the antimatter plane um, for Beyond Kerbal, and then someone just like was trying, to, genuinely trying to be helpful, and they're like, "Oh, you could add vector engines." And it's like, yeah. what? Not, not... <laughs> using antimatter. I remember, I was, I was there for that. Yeah. Oh, that was funny. That really made me laugh. I was just like, okay, I appreciate the input, but I think, I think we up. might be on. <laughs> no, I did not say that. It was just like, hmm, might be on a. On another plane of existence right now, <laughs> like so far down the the modding the KSP modding rabbit hole. Um, yeah, I think maybe really some... like you should add some vector engines to this. Yeah, for real, I think I think that'd be a great idea. What a great suggestion, Stake. Thank you very They've much. Got such good thrust to weight ratio. <laughs> yep, no better than a, than an antimatter engine with fifteen million ISP of. Yeah, but you see, you, like, you can't trust antimatter because, like, is it even real? I mean, yes. Can uh, you touch it though? I mean, you could touch it. You wouldn't exist for very much longer after you touched it. But I mean, you could. There's no reason you couldn't. I can't see it. I don't know it's there. <laughs> I don't know. Can you see antimatter? It does still interact with light. You could technically see it. Hang on, let me Google it. It does interact with light. It's not dark matter. So you could see antimatter if you had enough of it. I, yeah, I, rush, I, I reckon. Ha -ha. Yeah. <laughs> I, I'm still googling it. Yeah, you can see it. There we go. Ha 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 ha. Congratulations, you have Google on your side. Uh, it's a good feeling. It's a good feeling, you know. I'm trying to figure out what strut to use here. I wonder if I just use structural panels, like a large structural panel to connect the radiators. Because um, these struts won't really work quite so huh. well um yeah i'll use structural panels i think it might look a little bit on the janky side um when has that ever stopped you <laughs> when has it ever stopped me honestly yeah remember the, the heavy stop? tank from um <laughs> earlier we uh um, we don't talk about that yeah <laughs> With that three pounder gun, it's just a box. <laughs> box tank. I, I it was based on the three inch gun carrier, which I saw it at the um I was just about to leave the tank museum and then I saw it. I don't know if you saw the it's, photo it, with it. Yeah, that. it's just a box with it's a with a three inch a box gun. With, yeah, a box with a three yeah, inch. I've, I've got it in War yeah. Thunder. Oh uh, yeah, I've got it in War Thunder too. I, I I was just leaving. I didn't realise they had one there, and then I saw it and I was like, Oh my god, box tank and my family were like what? <laughs> and I was like, it's yep. the box tank. It's so the it's meme. Just the <laughs> it's a tank that's just a box, and that's it. And that's all it needs to be. And it's it's happy being a box. It's beautiful no matter what shape it is. It's beautiful in its own way. Box tanks are real tanks too. Yeah. Okay, actually, that looks that looks all right as a as a strut connecting. Yeah, that looks pretty yeah. pretty good. That looks fine. I might actually make it a bit larger and connect it directly to the main structure um hmm do it do it do it do it can, um Strike for some reason down. saying do it just activated my okay google <laughs> i got a new have phone you, have I you got a, 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 custom, a custom name no i'm just going do it in a weird voice just it's done it again okay that's a bit odd um i'm not sure how that happened but sure let's not question it we learn not to question things hmm. so as you might be asking so when was the first time you started watching my channel oh jesus um it's been a yes. while right <laughs> yes um <laughs> at some point through uh, uh, at some point at very, some point <laughs> very um very accurate yeah it's they're in there somewhere <laughs> okay do you any like it. ballpark figure um, I'm trying to remember what the first series of yours I, I saw. It has to be Fall of Kerbin. Yeah? Is that when you jumped I got a random suggested for, like, episode 10 of Fall of Kerbin part 2. Oh, well, season, season two. 2, right. And I watched, I started to watch it, I'm like, there's shit going on here I don't understand, but it looks <laughs> awesome. And I went back and was severely disappointed by the first three episodes, but stuck with it, and, um, just because nothing was happening, you know. Yeah, it was Tech a lot driving. of setup. yeah. Yeah. When I go back and rewatch it, I'll be honest, I skip the first season. Yeah, fairs. 
I mean, it didn't get exciting until until World War Two, really. Yeah. Um, when we had enough units on the field that we could just throw them at each other and have massive battles and. Yeah, instead of you know, you know who had around. who had the most surviving tanks from the last engagement, <laughs> just battling between those two fobs, yeah. back and forth, back and forth. We did, yeah. This the urban combat was a lot of fun. Um, yeah, it was my favorite. I mean, it episode. wasn't fun to play because it was um, it was all at like four frames a second because the amount of colliders that those cities had. Um, oh, just get a better PC. <laughs> I mean, I did. I got a better PC for that series. I got an even better one for Kerbal Rising, and then I had another PC upgrade <laughs> before for Kerbal Kind. I've always been like continually upgrading the PC to make it handle my more ambitious <laughs> series. Um. But, uh, but yeah, that was, uh, yeah. I think it took a while to, like, figure the rules out as well because Tape kept finding broken-ass things he could do. Yeah, um, well, you found them and told them about it. Yeah, well, yeah, sometimes I find them and then, yeah, as I said, made the mistake of, of telling him. Um, but, yeah. How often do you rewatch Fall of Kerbin now? I know some people rewatch it quite a bit. Like, I still get quite a few comments on them. Four or five um, times now? Yeah, cool. Yeah, uh, this think, is going to um, sound horrible, but it's forgettable, for, forgettable enough in some of the episodes that you don't remember exactly what happens when. Yeah, yeah. Like, think... not to spoil it, because I know it's a thriving series. <laughs> but, um, uh, you know, I know who, who wins the whole thing and, and at what stage, roughly, it turns. But it's just watching the individual engagements is still fun. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's been so long. Sometimes I go back and watch like occasional things. And I'm just like, oh, that was a cool, a cool thing. Like I just go back and watch like the Clash of the Titans episode or something. Like, you know, when the yeah. really big things happened. Um, yeah. And that can be quite a lot of fun. Um, hmm. Yeah. So that when, that's when you hopped on. So Olaf is currently the oldest, the the oldest fan. Um, Wow. I think because Olaf has been here since Collaborative Warfare, which you think the first, <laughs> you think the first season of Fall of Kerbin is uh, is not great. <laughs> I don't know. People hold uh, Collaborative Warfare in like really special place in their heart, but it I... wasn't good. Like it, it, I guess it was the first thing of its kind, but it. I must say, I, I've tried watching it and I just couldn't. It's not great. It's really not. I, like, got, I made like, it when I was fifteen. The... Like it's six years ago now, right? Like people. Even when we were making Fall of Kerb in like season three, people were still like, "Oh, when's when's Collaborative Warfare coming back?" I'm like, D "This is so much better!" Like, <laughs> what Wait, did you, you not finish it? Collaborative Cla 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 Warfare, no, oh, it never, well, never ended sure. because um, Agonach, you know, had a child. It's <laughs> probably more important things to do than blow. Cables maybe, up maybe it's to be finished internet. by the next generation. The, as I said to Olaf, the number of times people have uh, have tried is. Uh, is amusing <laughs> i mean um, you all have kids and then let them finish what their forefathers started oh yeah that's a good idea yeah tape will just be like avenge me <laughs> <laughs> the man that bested me <laughs> yeah that'd be fun what are you thinking of the venture style so far by the way pretty no you <laughs> no you <laughs> You can't. You're the prettiest princess. You can't even say oh, it's that. It's true. It's true. It's true. I am. There's a lot of Discord in jokes that people aren't going to get. <laughs> they uh, don't realize quite how camp I am on my Discord. <laughs> yes. Oh. Remember we had that. Um... Actually, I like that. Oh, yeah. This is coming along. This is looking better than I than I thought it would actually. I'm. Put a I'm put a skirt on it. This. If you like, then you should put a skirt on it. <laughs> yeah. Everything's better in a skirt, right? Everything is better in a skirt. Absolutely. Okay, I've never actually worn a skirt, but I'm actually we're actually doing a um, some of my music societies. We're doing a cross dressing social next Saturday, which is going to be quite based. interesting. I'm actually shaving my beard for it, <laughs> so oh. that's going to be fun. That's um, not required in cross dressing, though. It's not required, but I thought it'd be fun, so it's one. Fair enough. Um, but yeah, so I'm actually shaving my beard for that, which is going to be amusing. Um, so yeah, I might send some pictures on the Discord, be like, ah, look at me, I'm a woman. That'd be entertaining. <laughs> I think Ellie's um, not looking forward to how insufferable I'm going to be <laughs> in a dress. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. All right, I'm having a little look at the Venture Star like, close-up shots and stuff to see what I'm missing at this like drive end. But I think I'm pretty much done um, with this end of the ship. All right, end the stream. <laughs> Don't let this end, on. there's you a whole other end of the ship, and then we've got to test fly it. 
You just you just no. want to get the last word in, don't you? Yes. Center of attention. Yes. And you don't realize you've got like another bunch of people on after you. Yes. <laughs> yes, yes, and yes. Yes. Um, speaking of which, I think it's almost lags a lot's time to come on the stream. Uh, but unless yeah. you have any questions or anything that you'd like to chat about before. Um, way to put me on the spot. Jeez. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> you did know this was going to happen like at least twenty four hours in advance. Yeah, but I'm bad. <laughs> If there's uh, anyone no. else, that's, that's chill. Um, but, you know, this is your chance to... Your one and only chance to, to ask any questions you may have. Um, can I have a Kerbal named after me? You already have a, an astronaut named after you in Mars Horizon. Uh, you're on my final mission. I that. haven't seen it yet. Oh, okay. You're not missing Need much. To... I don't think it's a great series, but a lot of people watch wow. it. So, for some reason. Like, I probably would have stopped doing it, like, yeah, after my spine broke, guys, but... This deep? Um, the views like consistently like over 5,000 people are watching each episode and considering how minimal effort it is to make I was like oh okay if people are enjoying it then, then sure I'll keep playing it um, a lot of let's plays I've started and no one's watched them so I've gone oh, okay and just finished the game myself and not kept recording it you know fair um, enough but you know apparently it's, apparently it's entertaining I don't know I can't agree but you from know, the, maybe the you'd enjoy it. I've seen it was pretty entertaining yeah okay it's mainly just me making Soviet jokes and <laughs> I mean they're good jokes. Is, yeah, they are good jokes. Um, but yeah, I named an astronaut after you in that, in like the finale for the final Mars mission. Um, I can name a Kerbal after you in Beyond Kerbal, but... Um, nah. The, the, the Kerbal's names won't be shown in the cinematics. Um, what is your first name? I assume it's not actually Steak, if you don't mind saying mm, on stream. No, it's, uh, it's Joe. It's Joe. Is... Are there any... Soviet cosmonauts with the first name Joe? Probably one with Joseph. Let's have a little look. Let's have a little look. Uh, Soviet cosmonaut Joseph. There's an American Joseph. There is an American Joseph. There's a NASA astronaut called Joseph. I don't think there's a there's a cosmonaut called Joseph. Oh no, here we go. Oh no, this is a art of a Russian cosmonaut done by someone called Joseph. That's not the same thing. Ah. Um. <laughs> I don't know when else I can name it. <laughs> name a Kerbal after you. You picked the wrong series to ask. Could have easily named one after you and Beyond Kerbal. It's a bit late now. Um. Just name the whole ship after me. Easy. The, the IEV Joseph. <laughs> um, no, don't. That was, you, can, I, you know what? You can pretend that the the Kerbal in the cinematic at the end of the last episode of Beyond Kerbal that that was Joseph Kerman. That was them. That was them, telling of the, of the of the manly. Can you yeah, put him in a skirt? Um, I mean, if someone, if actually, if someone modelled a skirt, and got, gave you a .mu file, I could, I could actually Kerbal inventory them a skirt. I could absolutely um, like Kerbal a skirt. So, you know, just model it in Blender. As based as that would be, no one would understand <laughs> outside of the Discord server. Just have this one Kerbal scientist in a skirt, just like <laughs> in a skirt vibing. with a Bren. Yeah, with a Bren gun. I can give them a Bren. I've already given the like, for all Kerbal kind Kerbals guns. Um, someone got. I we got the TP eighty two working, which is pretty cool. Oh yeah, yeah. Naughty cool. Word made that. Yeah. But yeah, so yeah, I, I can't really honor your request, but um, you know. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> you can your head cannon can be that Joe Kerman is that is that Kerbal on Cuprus, because <laughs> they didn't actually have a name, so. Yeah. I just spawned a Kerbal. Yeah, for the cinematic. Anyway, lovely talking to you, Steak. I mean, we chat quite a bit on the Discord anyway. Um, yeah. Yeah, we're currently uh, currently four for four with engineers. Uh, so doing great, doing good. I think the people who were playing along with the drinking game are um, starting to feel the effect a bit. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, is it yeah. is it only as long as the street goes, or just for every engineer? Just every engineer ever. All right. Stop. Yeah, until you die. Yeah, well, then. I'm going to pass out soon then. <laughs> right. Lovely talking to you, Steak. And uh, we'll have a game night at some point. So I'll yeah, be on see that. you soon, and, dude. Uh, I'll talk to you soon. Okay. Toodles. See ya. Bye. That was very nice. I'm going to have a very, very quick break uh, to get myself another drink. So I've got a very dry throat. Um, while you look at the Venture Star in its Glory. We finished half of it, though. And the complicated half, which I'm pretty pleased with, actually. I think it looks great. As soon as these uh, radiators heat up, it's going to look really, really cool. Um, I'm not sure if this mechanically will work yet, but we'll we'll figure it out. Um, but yeah, I'm pretty damn happy with this so far. So I'm gonna leave 
bit like this. Uh, I'm going to have a very short break and then we will chat to Lags a lot very shortly.
Howdy y'all, we're back. So, we're gonna give Lady Lancelot a ring now. I am also here. I have um, gotten up from the sofa. <laughs> <laughs> Specifically <laughs> for Lancelot. You don't know you're born. Look at all this effort she's going to for you. Okay. Okay. We're going to give her a ring. Can you hear that? I can hear yeah, that, okay, yes. Cool. Thank you. Good Hello. Checking. Hello. 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 How you doing? I'm doing all right, yeah. So. Just, just chilling out. Yeah. Well, I've, I've roused Ellie from the dead specifically <laughs> to talk to you. So... <laughs> so here she is. I wouldn't do it for anyone else. Oh. Really like Hello. I want, I want to make that clear, clear to you. <laughs> Hiya. How are you doing? Um, you know what? All right. I'm all right. I think the COVID that we have is a, a milder COVID, but I'm still. That's point, good. I think. Yeah. Still not happy about it. I'll be honest. <laughs> that's that's understandable. That's yeah. the audacity, Beardy. You you've. Given given cover to my wife. That's, that's <laughs> terrible. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Disgraceful behaviour. Yeah. Yeah. Really. Anyway, so um, you know, do you mind just sort of telling us a little about yourself? So, whereabouts are you from? I so, I'm from in Edinburgh, right? Uh, well, I'm not actually in Edinburgh, but um, near enough. Mm -hmm. Uh, from Scotland. Um, I'm fort unfortunately, uh, like steak spoiled. I'm not an engineer. Um, I've broken the streak. Oh no! Yes. <laughs> no non shots for anyone to take today. Non-engineers unite. <laughs> I'm a I'm a physicist though. Oh okay. Uh, well, we're still in well, STEM then. <laughs> so yeah, not still, 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 still STEM. Mind. Um, I'm not. Well, I'm still a student, but I'm I'm going into uh, astrophysics. Okay. So uh, that's. I mean, I'm just waiting for uni offers, isn't it? Waiting for responses from unis now. Mm -hmm. What um, unis are you thinking of going to? Uh, Glasgow is probably the the top prior the the sort of the top choice, and then Edinburgh is a close second. Okay. Yeah. Oh, awesome. What you hoping to sort of do with a physics degree? Did you not so really know yet? it would be um, probably going on to get a PhD. Okay. Yeah. And uh, and then going on to get a PhD, and then go into research. Hmm. Um, and probably probably to do with do with planetary systems or the the formation of, of stars and planetary system and exoplanets oh awesome yeah that's really cool yeah of oh, course cool stuff thank you i was <laughs> looking at reference shots of the i've like, been replaying the same like shots of the venture star over and over <laughs> and over to try and uh, get an idea of what i'm doing i still don't know what i'm doing I've got even less idea what you're doing. So. <laughs> Ellie hasn't got a clue. <laughs> I mean, you're asking, you're like, oh, yeah, you know, does, uh, does Ellie know about Beyond Kerbal? No, <laughs> not a clue. <laughs> so, yeah, you're... Uh... I only come around for the hot chocolate. Yeah, it's true. And then just <laughs> one day I was just com. like, yeah, I was just like, oh, here we go. Here's some, here's some XCOM and uh, just sat in front of a computer and then there we go. That's how that oh. happened. Um but yeah, has, how long have you been watching the channel then? Because you've been on the Discord for a little while now. Um, I've I've been on the Discord for a lot longer than I've been active. Right. Um, yeah. I think maybe was maybe the start of endurance. Okay. Yeah. That's I I joined well, during I I started watching endurance. Um, mm. I don't remember if it was the start or not. Uh, it I, if it wasn't the start, it wasn't that far into it. Okay. Maybe sort of the tens mm -hmm. um but yeah yes it's been really cool i've uh i haven't i've i've been mainly watching this the uh endurance and beyond curveball but um realism overhaul and that sort of stuff it doesn't do it for me as much um mm -hmm. i quite like the kind of cartoony yeah um yeah. not not quite as as realistic uh sort of vanilla well vanilla <laughs> as i say this is, this is very far <laughs> not from not really vanilla now. Yeah, not yeah. very vanilla, but um, yeah, it's 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 yeah, I've been loving. Uh, I love to see. I've, I'm so happy to see it come back after mm. nearly a year, eight over a year, eighteen months, over a year. Oh yeah, wow, a long hiatus. Yeah, I, yeah. As I said, like I got 
so I had a lot a lot of time during lockdown, and I was, that was when I started. I had the time to plan a new series. Mm-hmm. So I, was, I knew Beyond Cover was going to come to an end. Um, so that's when I was planning for all cover kind, of, and it just it just happened a lot faster than I thought it would. Because um, usually finding a YouTuber and whatever, like you talk to them, you get like a reply like six months later or whatever. But <laughs> N9, like I didn't directly ask N9. Um, someone else told me about his channel because um, his channel was I think less than a thousand subs at the time and was like hey this, this is a smaller right. YouTuber but his stuff's really great um, and I didn't have the chance to check out his channel uh, and then I got a message from him and he was just like hey so someone said that you were looking for another you know a realism overhaul YouTuber I'm in he was like in capital letters in 100% <laughs> and I, I was like okay <laughs> let, let me check out these videos and I watched his stuff and I was you know basically blown away by it you know just how cinematic it is um, you know all of it is and um, what a good commentator he is uh, considering yeah. I've never heard of his channel so compared with you know even like some of the I, I was considering people like Ray's Space and people with like 15 to 20k I actually asked Shadow Zone and, uh, but he said he was a bit too busy to do it right um, so yeah so then I was like actually you know I think this would probably be the best person to do it with you know just how good his content was and um, awesome yeah so it just took off like really really quickly and then I had uni come back and then mm. I, I was going to finish it at the Christmas and then I broke my spine in December so then that's just that's what happened that was... so you know it'd be, I, was, I, I was always you know, a lot of people were like oh okay so this is dead now comments I kept like always like replying to them like no it's not dead I promise like it is <laughs> I'm going to finish it honest um but just you know haven't haven't had the time um haven't been able to and, until now i guess um yeah. i mean that's yeah. to- totally understandable yeah um yeah but you know it's always thanks to you know supporters like you that i'm able to <laughs> i'm able to bring it back at all really um because, oh, well uh, i've you know I, I said i wouldn't have the time to do it if, if i had to have a real job <laughs> so um, yeah well, I'm very happy to support. Um, I I've been wanting to for a long time. <laughs> uh, I was I was right in there as soon as you announced it. Um, oh really? As soon yeah, as yeah, you announced yeah. your Patreon, yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you so much. Yeah. yeah. No, I say it's it's no, really appreciated. And thanks for coming on the stream as well. You know, it's been it's really it's been so no lovely problem. actually. Like, I I should I might just do this more <laughs> often. I might honestly just make a little chat with my Emperor Penguin tears and just and just bring you guys on on streams. It's really nice to just to chat to someone on a stream, especially if it's a building stream because you know yeah <laughs> it's not the most riveting thing to watch um <laughs> sometimes but um, no that's sort of yeah I'm, I'm happy to be here it's uh it's awesome so, do you have any like any questions for <laughs> well for ellie <laughs> 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 particularly um i don't know well, for either of us really you don't have to yeah. it's fine i'm barely able to function at the moment <laughs> to answer it anyway so <laughs> it's cool either way but, uh, yeah if there's anything Are you... you want to talk about are you into space stuff, Ellie? Am I into space stuff? Um, I'll be honest with you, Lady Lags a lot. Anything that's sort of a wide open expanse generally scares me. So space, um, the ocean, any great heights. So I find it interesting to hear about this kind of stuff. But like, I have occasionally tried to look at like some of the videos that Ollie puts together in it. I find it a bit, um, I don't know, not vertigo, but yeah i can't it's, it's interesting to hear about but i can't say that i take a an actual avid interest in it because it's, it feels too unknown for me and it freaks me out it's probably the honest no, that's, answer. <laughs> that's 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 totally fair enough no yeah yeah there's it's it's a it's a incredibly large uh field so there's so much <laughs> so it's much such an interesting field you're going into like do you want to talk a little bit about that like i mean uh if you want, yeah, yeah it's I'd love um, to hear about it. yeah, it's really cool. I'm, I mean, I'm still, I'm still in in secondary school uh, currently. I'm doing, doing advanced hires for the Scottish system is different from the rest of the UK. Advanced hires are a little bit. They're like, they for you need advanced hires for English unis because hires aren't quite the same as A level. Okay. Yeah. So I think advanced hires are a little bit above, but you know, comparable. So uh, I'm working on that and. Um, I've just I've just done my uh, my my prelims a couple mm-hmm. of weeks ago, and then uh, I sent off uni applications a few months ago. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And w- waiting for waiting to hear from stuff back, but yeah, it's gonna be um, it's gonna be cool. I like I said, I wanted to to go uh, to get a PhD, mm. and um, 
go into research, probably spend most most of my uh, working career in, in universities. Mm. Um, yeah, like and uh, yeah, lo hopefully looking to to go into the formation of planetary systems, something like that. That's really because cool. it's 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 yeah. something which which I just I find incredibly interesting and uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, awesome. That's really cool. Yeah, I mean that was you know that was me just with with rocket science. Really, it was just like I was like, oh, what is there that's more interesting mm. than it's a aerospace engineering? Is that yeah, what yeah. So mm -hmm. well, it's, yeah. It, the full course title is uh, is astronautics and aeronautics because um, there is the focus on on the space stuff. So the orbital mm -hmm. mechanics. So it, actually, we have some lectures with some of the physics students, um, right? Depending on their stream. So doing the uh, the astronautics modules and, and the orbital mechanics stuff. And honestly, I'm just at peace with the world in those classes are so <laughs> interesting i'm doing space environment at the moment as a module which is just oh it's so cool so interesting uh, awesome. i'll talk to ellie about it sometimes and her eyes glaze over but um, <laughs> yeah because ellie did a, a very different degree at uni um <laughs> what did you do ellie um i studied economics which everyone oh. <laughs> loved to be like wow when i tell them that but it's really a very very simple degree with a lot of very very simple concepts it's one of those ones where it's kind of i think other people that do economics like to pretend like it's harder than it really is um and it's it's really not difficult um whereas with engineering i think it's, it's actually a lot it's like content wise don't inflate my ego too much a lot like. to I, I don't need to wait, wait, until you're, wait till you're in distress i won't be able to even speak to you again um yeah no so i yeah i studied economics because i kind of liked the fact that it was sort of fact-based, sort of, emphasis on the sort of, um, you can only look at what has happened, you don't know what's going to happen, and then the rest of it is basically just speculation, just like, oh, well, this happened last time, so maybe that'll happen again this time, and then you're either right or you're wrong, and that's just kind of it, but it's just interesting to kind of, I don't know, try and make sense of the world, I think. Um, Fair enough. Yeah, I was nearly going to do a maths degree, and then I thought I'd become insufferable if I did a maths degree, so I didn't do it. Oh, already degree. insufferable, so. Oh, thank <laughs> you. Yeah, no, I, Ollie uh, dropped me. I, I did further maths at A level and loved that. Um, but yeah. it turned out that actually further maths at A level is what you need to do economics at uni more than you need to do in economics A level. So clearly right. that's where my interest lies, just to sort of <laughs> ridiculous numbers and I don't know. But yeah, not engineering and not <laughs> space. <laughs> no, that's fair enough. I I mean I I love maths as well. I've uh, ever since being quite young, I've had a, uh, it's I found it incredibly fascinating, and I I found it so much easier to to work with, um, than yeah, than maths. than letters and You two words. are so weird. <laughs> <laughs> I'm an engineer like, and I don't enjoy maths. They're, like, they're the right oh. or wrong, but you can also I like the way that you can use maths to like express things. I think it's yes, just amazing. It is. It's brilliant. I I I I prefer the I I like the I like how I. Uh, you can be right. It is you. There is a right answer, but there's, you can do lots of things to get there. Exactly. Yeah. See, she gets it. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I know I'm outnumbered, but uh, disagree. <laughs> Strong disagree. Yeah. So um, I say so. You you joined, jumped on the series. Uh, so I jumped on the channel endurance, right? So. Yeah. 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 So yeah, so but how, how long ago was that now? So that would have been what, that was like 2017, 2018? Because I was doing endurance like before I went to uni, like when I was talking yeah. about my uni offers and and things. And I don't yeah, know, like, I'm just genuinely curious. Like, yeah, has it, yeah. 2017, 2017, maybe 2018. That sounds about right. Yeah, I'm genuinely just quite curious because you know, like I've watched like some YouTubers for for that long and. I don't know, has it like affected how you know, your interests, like where, where your interests have been or like nurtured anything? Because, you know, like certain YouTubers like Scott Manley and stuff, you know, like mm. really, really encouraged me to, to get into the fields that I'm, I'm in now. And I was wondering if yeah. I've had any positive effect on anyone in my life. <laughs> no, that... right, you just said, I no, don't you... want an ego boost. And now you're like, <laughs> no, I'm just asking. Tell me all the ways that have changed your life. <laughs> <laughs> no, you've you've definitely had a positive effect on my life uh, and, and, and my experience. You have, uh, 
and any time uh, I I watch I watch a series of your well a KSP series of yours it'll it'll make me very um uh make me really want to go play KSP again mm. um uh, and uh and I I was for a long time I I had been considering um aerospace engineering uh or or you know rocket science right yeah um, aerospace engineering <laughs> yeah <laughs> is the technical term um, yeah. Yeah, and it's uh, it it was it was something that I I yeah I considered for a while sort of since I sort of made made choices for uh, Nat fives which are like um, GCSEs, hmm. uh, but it's it it was something which I kind of I this year uh, in sixth year you get to do lots of modules hmm. in my school at least you you can choose different modules and I chose an astronomy module and it's something which uh, which has been wonderful. Uh, I've I've really enjoyed it, and there's there's only two people taking the class, right, um, yeah. so I, I've just get to t- I, we just get to talk to the teacher about lots of stuff, and I've I've just always found uh, space and 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 that sort of stuff so uh, intriguing and, yeah. uh, and passionate about. See, I sort of came from the opposite direction. I was always obsessed. I always thought I was going to be an astrophysicist. Uh, I was always obsessed with <laughs> space. And it was actually when I got a little bit older that um, I started to get more interested in the actual... I think, as I say, it was, it was, it was like Scott Manley and, and watching and getting into Kerbal Space Program, I think, um, that got me more and more interested in um, in the actual rockets themselves and, yeah. uh, and the vehicles and the mechanics of space exploration. Um, yeah, it was, it was sort of... Ended up pushing me in that direction. So, yeah, it would have been, you know, when I was, I don't want to sound old now, but <laughs> like similar <laughs> age to you, I guess. But when I was picking my A level options, was when I was, I really settled on, on aerospace engineering rather than uh, astrophysics. I think because it's a little more, I think the types of, of maths that it uses, because I don't, I don't hate maths. It, it's, it depends what type of maths it is. Um, and engineering uses all the kinds of maths that I'm, that I'm good at. Um, I think, whereas, I think, you know, further maths and, all that lot just <laughs> made me want to cry just looking at the syllabus so no um, imaginary numbers uh we know we deal with imaginary numbers in engineering a lot actually. oh yeah of More course than you would think because you know uh, yes alternating with, uh, current and um, abs- yeah no i've 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 looked into that as well and that's it's so cool i i hear people um oh, complain cool. about how you know the how imaginary numbers are not real and and why do we learn about them but no they're so important to to everything we do that's um, a really and, weird and, honestly it broke my brain <laughs> an engineering degree right because you 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 know do all this frequency analysis and stuff and and, and it's like they're imaginary numbers but they actually have an effect on mm-hmm. on the real world and if you multiply them together then it becomes a real number so you can't just disregard them because then suddenly otherwise <laughs> you've got real numbers popping up out of nowhere and yeah how did that broke my brain <laughs> it still does yeah Oh, stakes just donated. Yeah, I saw that. I saw that. I'll, I'll talk to all the. Um, I'll go through all the donations in a minute. He's, uh, <laughs> he, I just when when he came on, I I did I did twenty five pounds or one pence so I could be above him again. But he's just he's just done more. So uh, yeah, yeah. You get the special uh, the donation thing, you get the invasion thing. I think if you've done yeah. the, the most on the stream, yeah. But, uh, yeah. I'm just a. Uh, Having a look at the site. I think this is almost at its full length, actually. I have any I have else is... no idea what I'm looking at. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna explain it for you. So, uh, well, this I'll give you the the actual picture of the actual spaceship I'm copying. So these are the engines, and they're powered by, anti- by antimatter. Um, so this pulls the spacecraft that way because um, you need less material um, if it's in tension. Um, so these are the big radiators for it. And then this is the crew stuff down here, uh, kept well away from the the engine, so they're not exposed to radiation. And these are the fuel tanks. And okay. That's it, really. It's just a big yeah. interstellar big spacecraft. Track tractor uh, design as well. It is a tractor design. Yeah, because yes. it's pulling but, from the front. Yeah. Yeah, it's cool. Like you I said, the the tension um, mm. it, it, materials. A lot of materials are better at resisting tension than compression. So. Yeah. But you have to deal with the fact that. You got to be very careful, otherwise you'll you'll fry everything <laughs> that you're pulling. <laughs> yeah, I think yeah on the actual yeah. ship the engines point outwards slightly so that they don't so that the exhaust mm-hmm. doesn't affect the the crew compartments. So um, yeah. I'll have but to then, do that. 
the more you point it outwards, the the more you lose due to. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Um, <laughs> I was chatting earlier, saying just like how basically accurate this this design is to how one a future FTL spacecraft could look like, and it's on screen for such a short amount of time in a relatively <laughs> silly movie with people like having ponytail sex and whatever that whatever it was about. <laughs> but <laughs> it's a. I uh, know it's really it's just really cool. Have you yeah, seen Avatar? I mean... Haven't you? Oh, Avatar! Yeah, this right. is from Avatar. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> with you. <laughs> Ellie gave me like the weirdest <laughs> look. Guys. Like, are we not talking about space right now? Okay. No, got it. Got it. She's got it. She's got it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I've, I've seen Avatar. I think, maybe, maybe only once. But it's, it's, it's a, it's an alright movie. The thing that's cool about it is, I only realized this well after I, I saw it. That like, how much went into the world that it's set in mm. the the language that the blue aliens speak is is something that they had had professional linguists come up with oh really and and um and oh, the awesome. same thing there's and the same thing with the drums with the music that the that the blue aliens have is uh mm. they had you know um like people professionals like come up with it and come up with with a, a very alien kind of music that that was not really like um at least western music i think there are some uh other influences but it's it it's, it it does seem very alien to 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 people and it's and it, yeah there's there's so much science and and effort went into it uh for a a decent movie but that that was was uh clearly, Too far. Not, clearly I think it gets a lot more hate than it i think it's a very solid yeah. very well made i think it's a very good movie i, I enjoy it quite a bit um i think you're just gonna not take it too seriously but i think it's yeah I think it's a good movie I think it gets more it's got a lot more hate like <laughs> more time has gone past i think <laughs> and because he, how many he's like he's filmed like four sequels back to back hasn't he something ridiculous something like that yeah. yeah it was i think they they made they did they put so much effort into the world the world mm. building um, which you see such a small amount of, and I think the idea was that is that they're gonna have multiple films, but I'm not sure if they will ever see the light of day. Oh, the first one's coming out this year, the Avatar oh. Two. It's this year. Seriously? Oh wow! Yeah. I, I just Finally, think... who cares anymore? But <laughs> it's coming out. What was it 2011 like... the first one? Uh, 2012, I think. Yeah. Right. Ago. Yeah. Might yeah. Be 2010 actually. It was like the first like big 3D. Yeah. Film, I mm. think. What are you saying? What killed you about it? Like... Oh, no, because it was like that chemical that they was really hard to get hold of. They just called it unobtainium. <laughs> and even at, I don't know, what, 11 years old, whatever I was watching that, I was like, what is going on? Unobtainium? <laughs> <laughs> you couldn't have called it anything else. They should have called it like very rare stuff. <laughs> like, I don't know. It's just funny. But it would make sense that they would build the world. Yeah, like you say, they built the world up so much that... It's kind of hard to get a full graph of it in the first film. I think that's kind of what makes the film so weird. Is that you're yeah, kind of getting used to like you say like the they like put so much effort into the language being alien, the music being alien, all the like the way they put their ponytail together. I don't know where people said earlier. <laughs> like, it's all like a bit weird that then you kind of just get to grips with that, and then the film basically ended. So I think it'd be quite cool yeah. to, to see a sequel. Yeah, well, I think four, whether we like it or not. Okay. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I think I think that they they made it. It was it was sort of written and directed from from someone who knew so much about the who'd been so deeply involved in the world building, mm. um, like it's it had been kind of written from the inside almost. So it it seemed a bit weird to people who hadn't who perhaps hadn't been so involved in it. Mm. Yeah. Either that or James Cameron's just a bit weird. <laughs> that's that's he's got his own very submarine, possible as well. Like something. Oh, does he? Like, yeah, he's got his own submarine. He goes on. Yeah. <laughs> I can hear you googling it. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. I think. Yeah. I think he's very like conscious about the environment and. Yep. And things. I think like that's why it's got such a potent environmental message as well. As there's a lot to do with that. Um, yeah. I'm trying. I'm looking at like reference photos of the uh, Venture Star, trying to make it as as accurate as possible here. So I'm adding the because the free because they have uh, cryopods on the Venture Star, um, which is what the main character wakes up in. So yes, yeah. Adding the cryopods where they should be, and <laughs> maybe going a bit too all out nerdy on this, but 
I think what this is going to be cool. Me? Never. Me, a nerd? Give this me. No way. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for that. <laughs> How big is it in the actual film? How big is it meant to be, at least? I was distracted by the blue men, but I'll be honest. <laughs> I, wasn't, I, wasn't, I wasn't taking in the, the measurements. But that's, that's a good point, to be fair. I don't know how, because it's got to fit all this stuff I, on it. Because, it, I mean, are you are you trying to make it, like, quote-unquote size accurate? No, I just know it's a look the just same cool scale. One. I mean, it's going to be part of a cinematic. I mean, I want it to work yeah. because I'm yeah. a perfectionist, but... Um, <laughs> Uh, yeah, I'm not too bothered about it being quote unquote size accurate. Um, yeah, I'm just like getting the look of it correct um, as okay. much as I can. I mean, can you, do you? Is there like a Google you can? I know Space Doc did a video on it. I think. Uh, is there any? Can you Google how big it is? Uh, sweet. Yeah, I'll do that. One thousand six hundred and forty-six meters. One thousand. Say it again. Uh, one thousand six hundred and forty-six meters. So. So a mile long. Yeah, uh, pretty much yeah, exactly pretty a mile much. long. Yeah. Uh, so this one is uh, nowhere near that long. Um, it's the cardboard <laughs> version though, so it's you know. Yeah. <laughs> is, it, is it? Is it an eighth of the size? <laughs> Three hundred meters. <laughs> Oh, nearly. That is nearly an eighth. That's close. That's close. A <laughs> little think, bit, yeah. little bit over. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's a little Fabby Kerbal version, all right? <laughs> it's a Fabby one. A mile long. It's when, crazy. when two venture stars love each other very, very much. <laughs> <laughs> okay. They put their ponytails together. <laughs> <laughs> Wrong with you. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I'm delirious from COVID. <laughs> mm, fair enough. No, don't no, worry. That was that was funny. <laughs> oh my god. I'm just picturing two spaceships having sex now. Okay, this is a PG stream. So let's, <laughs> let's get that picture out of everyone's minds. <laughs> you weirdos. <laughs> oh, oh goodness that was me. funny. <laughs> that was funny. Okay. Well, this has been lovely, like start. I think we're going to gonna have to say goodbye to you now, though. Oh, um, okay, Doug. We've got a few more people to bring on. This has been lovely, though. I um, I'd love to Thank have you, you on another yes. stream sometime. It's been and, good. Uh, yeah. Thanks for chatting. Thanks for coming on. It's been really nice chatting. Of course. Um, yeah. It's been yeah, lovely. we'll have a game night sometime. So I'll see you. On Absolutely. That for sure. Um, but yeah, right best then. of luck with everything. And uh, thank you. Yeah. Lovely to speak to you. You too. <laughs> I hope you you recover from COVID yeah. soon. Bloody well hope so too. <laughs> right then. Thank you. Right. Bye, Thanks a then. lot. Bye bye. 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 What a right. lovely little Scottish accent that was. Ooh. What a lovely Scottish lady. What a lovely little Scottish lady. Okay. So, next to, you know, uh, <laughs> to follow up that act, we've got uh, Axel. And then uh, I think we'll bring on Lightning a little bit later as well. You, you can go back to dying on the sofa if I you want. I think I'm going to make now. a lemsip sip, actually. Yeah, yeah, okay. You you make your lemsip. Yeah, you I can take the headphones out now. needed. Is that going to disturb the... No, that's fine. Okay, I don't okay, know how do things work. <laughs> <laughs> I put in a headphone splitter so Ellie could hear lags a lot. Okie dokie, let's, uh, let's give Axel a call. Now nah, you can do the cut. It's fine. Uh, I'll turn the. Let me turn the microphone pick up down a little bit because it's just going to be up to my, my mouth. So hope you guys won't mind a kettle in the background. With us British, you know, we like our hot drinks. Ellie's making a lem sip. She needs it because she has COVID. I'm sure you can all. Yeah. In case you didn't realise, in case you didn't pick up from the first twenty times I mentioned it, she does have COVID. Okie dokie, let us give Axel a ring. Ask them if they're ready first. Cool, what's the bet that they do STEM? What's the bet they do STEM? The next person. See, I know what STEM means. When I hear it, I hear it in like the, the queer vernacular. <laughs> but they probably do do STEM. Uh, you said doo doo. 
<laughs> Got him. Okay. Okay, we're betting money that they do stem. Get your shot glasses ready. Here we go. Hi, Axel. Hello. Oh, I need to turn you up a bit. Um, give me a second. Uh, or maybe it's just the kettle that Ellie's got on. It's irritating. Um, try now? Yeah, hello. Hello, hello, how's it going? Yeah. Uh, quite good. I don't know if you're quiet for the stream, actually. Right. I'll make sure I turn you up for the for the stream people, too. Okay. Make sure you're not too much quieter than me. I can probably increase the sensitivity on my microphone. That would probably help, actually. Do you think you could do that? Yeah. Just real quick. Oh, so before we start chatting, uh, so do you do STEM? Or what, what, what do you sort of do? Uh, I'm, doing uh, I'm doing the precursor to that. I'm doing a gymnasium. So okay. Tactical gymnasium. So I could become an like, engineer. Okay, so almost an engineer. <laughs> yes. Well, so uh, where are you from? Uh, Sweden. Oh, from Sweden. Whereabouts? Uh, around the middle, I'd say. Middle. Let's okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah. yeah. Uh, have you turned up your sensitivity, by the way? Uh, I ha I actually, it's, it's, it's at maximum. Okay, perfect. Yeah, that's, that's better. I'll just turn you up a little bit for the stream. That's perfect, because I, I can yeah, hear you just fine. But... Okay, good. I'll try to be a bit louder, too. No, that's fine. That's perfect. That's all good now. I just getting the audio levels. Mm. Getting the audio levels right. Okay, so there we go. Ellie's made her lem sip now, so we can uh, we can have yeah. a proper chat. So, um, yeah. So, so you're from Sweden. Um, so, so yes. What is exactly you say you're doing? So, uh, I'm not familiar with gymnasium. It's I guess it's got like high school, but not high school. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, how long have you been watching the channel then? Uh, I don't know. Since the beginning of Beyond Kerbal, I okay, think I yeah. watched. I think I got recommended it around the time the first episode came out. Okay, yeah. Oh, excuse me, did you watch the first, like, Instellar Dreams sort of uh, video around yeah. that sort of time? Yeah, okay. Yeah, I did. So I remember that That's video, all... thankfully, somehow won the algorithm lottery. It's, like, yeah. fast. I think it's almost my most watched video. Um, really? I think that's what brought in a lot of people. Yeah, is that in the Going Into Stellar videos? Um, they actually did very, very well, which I was quite, oh. quite chuffed yeah. with. <laughs> Back in the day, but um, yeah. So, well, sort of. I guess any questions you want to ask, or you know, we sort of want to talk about. We've talked about everything to do with STEM <laughs> already. No. I think. Sucks. Um, but yeah, what are you sort of hoping to go into then? So you're hoping to become an engineer, maybe? Or yeah, some sort of engineer. I'm thinking fire safety engineer. Oh, okay. Thing. Yeah. So and what's thing sort of drawn you towards that? Uh, well, it seems fu it seems relatively fun, and also it well it doesn't it's not that hard to get accepted into that like course, mm -hmm. which means I don't need to get straight A's in everything. Mm. I can I can go with like a few A's and a few C's. Yeah, yeah, no, oh, perfect. Yeah, when I was um, so unfortunately they so to get to do aerospace um, you know you need you need the the straight A's and. That was a big source of stress for me because, um, yeah, I, I never really was a straight A student. I didn't do great in my GCSEs, but it, it was like the one thing that I was interested in. Um, so I remember, like, I did my <laughs> I put my options in, and it was all it was like my first first choice was A star AA, and then backup was AAA. And my my mum at the time she was like, uh, "Do you not want to have a slightly <laughs> safer backup?" And she was like, "You know, what if you don't get in?" And I was like, "Well." You know, the only thing I want to do is aerospace, and that's you know that's the lowest that they'll go. Um, and so she was, I say she she was like, if you thought of considering like other options than aerospace, and I was like, let you know what, yeah, well if you get lower grades, I was like, I won't get lower grades. I just won't. I'll I'll, <laughs> I'll just work until my eyes bled. And honestly, I don't think I've ever have or probably ever will work that hard again in my life. Um, like doing it because like I wasn't naturally gifted at, at maths um this obviously like ellie and lags a lot were talking about how much they love maths so, <laughs> you know i can get by with it but i don't enjoy it um yeah. so yeah like it was it was just through more just determination and studying until my eyes bled rather than any sort of natural 
gift I had at it, I think, um, that got me where I am. But even like on the on the course, like you got some people who are like clearly like genius level intellect, you know. Mm-hmm. And um, I guess I can keep up with them, but the amount I have to do about maybe like twice as much <laughs> work on a subject as they do, you know, before it clicks with me, um, you know. But I was just saying, like, um, you know, I can't grades say are, I very good at math myself but i get by yeah what i'm saying like you know don't let it ever you know put you off of of you know what you want to do um you know if you're interested in something it's got high grade requirements you know you, you can you can find the especially if you like really set on something you know i guess in the same way that i, I was set on doing this degree you know you can sort of find the will to <laughs> to study really hard um yep. Yeah, I said, I don't think I'll ever work that hard again. <laughs> uh, as long as I'm alive, to be honest. But um, but yeah, you know, I, obviously I, I did that once. Um, and it's now I'm here. So. Yeah, I, I don't think... Um, I think, honestly, like, once you get to uni, you, you don't... I mean, like, it's a lot of work. It's a lot of time. But you don't work yeah. quite as hard as you do at, at A-levels and stuff. Like, that's really, like, the the pivot point of your life if that if that makes sense so that's what sort of decides where where your future is um, i'd say i'm familiar with a levels uh that's the thing you do to get into uni um, um for us so what would the equivalent be for you uh, i guess that would be like the high university exams you can do that or you get in with like grades oh so did the unis have their specific exams yeah, they do, they do, but you don't have to do that to get in. Right, like, okay. You could get in through grades alone. Oh, okay. So what what are the grades? Is it just like just your subject grades then? Like... Yeah, like ETA. Oh, really? Just like in, in the subjects? You don't have like, is yeah. it internal exams like the, on the yeah. school? Or is it, oh, they're not standardized? Yeah. Like there's no big uh, standardized? There are standardized tests on in the gymnasium that decides <laughs> the grades. Uh, but like, if you have, say, straight A's, you have a 20 points. And if you have 20 points, you can get into basically anything you want. All right. Well, if okay. you have necessary qualifications, like, you have to do specific courses, though. Okay. So, well, that's interesting. I just, it's interesting to see, yeah. you know, it just works slightly differently. Yeah, you um, have to do physics 2, chemistry 1, and, like, uh, math 3, and some other things. Hmm. Okay, yeah. that's just interesting the way it works. Everyone's yeah. got their own system. I don't, I don't know how lags a lot system work either. Scotland, <laughs> technically part of the same um, political union, but even they've got a different schooling system. Oh, um, you're right. You're British. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I'm in England, I'm studying in Southampton. Um, ah. but yeah. So I'm just focusing on. The venture star right <laughs> trying to figure out what looks yeah. okay um yeah right. speaking of the venture star are mm-hmm. you gonna have a solar sail um that's a good question uh i could have one because uh the i think it's supposed to have like a ginormous solar sail yeah it is so it's it's at the other end um so i think the yeah. way that it works from memory um, like the law of it is the journey from earth like accelerating out from earth they use a giant laser to accelerate they shoot a giant yeah. laser at the solar cell and accelerate it it only uses its antimatter engines at uh pandora yeah um, um, but why couldn't they just have a laser at both places well, yeah, I mean, maybe they don't have the infrastructure to build a giant laser <laughs> but obviously they had to make yeah. the trip the first time so Probably not. Yeah, but uh, I, I'll have a little look actually. Let's have a little, little look now because I have got the thing that I used to make the the, the bifrost thing. Um, I don't know why I'm looking in. I don't know. I, I thought I was looking in the maritime bag for a second. Uh, let's have a little look because that might be doable. At least to have a giant mirror um, at the end, just to have it look the part, even if I don't use it. I don't. I don't think I'll. I'll use it. Um, because I could get a couple more mods and make like the actual like breakthrough star shot and have lasers that can shoot things possible. But uh, that, that like a mod came out shortly after. I was a bit annoyed actually because I made the finale to Endurance where I did the closest thing I could where yeah, I used beamed power to power a probe 
to go into Stella. And then shortly afterwards, a mod came out that actually combined, you know, worked with Interstellar that let you shoot lasers at things and produce propulsion, like an actual uh, laser sail. I, yeah, um, I think in this case, B Interstellar has that by now. Oh, uh, actually, okay, maybe, yeah, maybe they just made it stock by oh, now. No, there is solar sails, I think. Oh, okay. Or, I think there might have been a solar s- sail. Yeah, a photon sail. Like free thinker. Oh, okay, yeah. Okay, yeah. So there you go. It does. Yeah, Fonte- Photon Cell. There you go. That's the Photon Cell mod was made for this. Yeah, that came out just after that finale. Um, but. Yeah, no. I don't know. <laughs> I'm not, probably not going to do it myself. <laughs> I'll, I'll add the, the mirror onto it. Um, if I can find the parts. Beamed power. I mean, you don't want to fry your kerbals alive. <laughs> Um, you know, let's save it. it let's see if I've got the Bifrost. Oh, I have got the Bifrost um, craft file. Let's see what it's called. Solar Thermal Power Mirror Receiver. Um. Oh, there it is. Okay. I, I keep forgetting the part names of these things. Let's put it on the end and see what it looks like. Yeah, it I might can't look ridiculous. See what you're talking about. The stream is delayed. Oh, uh, yeah. Well, yeah, I guess you'll see it in a, in a minute. Yeah, right, let's expend these panels. I forgot how massive this thing is. Oh, okay, this could work. This could work, actually. Yes, very nice. If we put it at this end. Uh, oh, I need to move the actual ship up. Actually, let me see how much more space do we need? Because this is the. I'm just looking at the length of the whole thing. Just need to have it in proportion. Yes. You've got the big gap in the middle. I think the truss might need to be a bit longer, depending on... That's where the condor go... Uh, let me just ah. merge a condor. Sorry, I'm just... <laughs> Let's merge a condor and see how the size of that, because we just need enough space for two of them um, ah. on these docking ports. Well, I think these, they... these little... Um, I think these little cryopods could actually move up a little bit. They don't need quite this much space for the docking mm. array. Ah, but either way, I think I think the truss needs to end about here. That's probably about. Actually, I'm not saying that as if you can see what I'm doing. I um, can't see what you're doing. <laughs> yeah, <I'm> sorry. Yeah. <laughs> You'll see it in a minute, I guess. Okay, let's see. Yeah. Let's see how ridiculous this looks. Uh, let's remove the shroud to start with. Yeah. You know, uh, the Ooh. contours aren't really in proportion. I have to say. Yeah. This does look a little on the silly side. But it also looks kinda yeah. kinda wicked yeah. actually, I'm not gonna lie. Like the mirror is big. Look at that very, very big. <laughs> but like I think that's a bit oversized, possibly. I can tweak it down, I think. Oh I can. Perfect. Oh, there we go. I can tweak scale it down. Oh, that this actually starts to work really, really well. This was a great say, idea. Thank you. <laughs> I have to say, Freefinger has done a great job with integrating tweak scale. Oh yeah, big time. Like, because you have to properly integrate it. You can't just, you know, just hope it will work. Yeah. Uh, with all the engines and everything, and no, agreed. Yeah. Definitely done an excellent job there. Um, this part doesn't perfectly work, but it works well enough that I'm happy with it. Um, yeah. I might make it a little bit larger so it sort of goes to this docking array because it looks a little janky at the moment. Let's try four meters wide. And maybe that will work. That is similarly quite janky. Um, you could go there actually and remove a truss segment. I would just remove a truss segment because this thing is long enough that it doesn't, doesn't need it. Okay, let's try this. Sorry, I just sort of <laughs> you gave me a great idea, and I've been I've been using that. So, is there anything like you want to ask me, or anything you'd like to sort of talk about? This is the first time we've spoken. Yeah, we're just not everything I wanted to ask has been asked. Already. <laughs> yeah, I guess to an extent. Um. <laughs> one thing I'm, I'm, 
I don't, I don't really have anything to ask about. What about things to, uh, do to, to, um, have any sort of suggestions for any of the series or anything that, anything that I'm working on? Or? Well, the one thing I would, like, no, I don't have anything. I would love to see Mars Horizon more because it's really fun. Oh, yeah. Do you enjoy, do you enjoy Mars Horizon? <laughs> yes. Yes, I do. Okay. I really yeah. Um, well, I can actually tell you I've finished it now. And I've scheduled all, all of it up. So the episodes are coming out every Tuesday and every Thursday at 7 p.m. Um, for the foreseeable future. Um, so that's that's what's happening with that series. Um, so, yeah, there's plenty more of that that on the way. Yeah, I literally, like, um, spent this week binge. I binge recorded it all the way to the end, like, as I was starting to go down with COVID. So I was trying to record it as fast as possible so I could, um, you know make sure that I, in case covid got really bad and i couldn't talk or something um and then i was just binge editing it and then i had like a little production line on on the <laughs> on the go um which Jeez. was quite amusing um but yes yeah, so while i was producing that um well, i was saying as, as fast as i could um and then yeah i was like rendering it and while i was rendering it i was uploading the ones that had just been rendered and then i was working on the thumbnails and and the like um and uh, yeah, so that's all. That's all scheduled up. That's all. all the thumbnails are done. Everything. It's scheduled up until May, I think, because I wanted regular, um, you know, semi-regular uploads to be to be going out. Um, right. Hopefully, that's I not remember. irritating that <laughs> that it's going to last take that long to all come out. But no, no, it's fine. I'm used to watching anime. It's pain. Oh. <laughs> I, I'm not sure it's quite the same uh, <laughs> caliber as anime, but. Um, you know, I try my best. Yeah. Um, oh yeah, I remember one question. How can you bear to play realistic overhaul? Realistic overhaul. <laughs> uh, in 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 what sense? In the, just how difficult it is, or uh, not the difficulty. I uh, I watched uh, someone make like a mission to Saturn in it, mm -hmm. and. Uh, I tried, and the launch vehicle used so many engines, it was so big, uh, I had 15 frames a second trying to launch it. I don't understand how you can how you can launch like so many things in like, such detailed rockets, like how? Oh, isn't like, how does my computer handle it? <laughs> yeah, no, and how do you handle it <laughs> so long? Um, well, so uh, computer-wise, you know, I've got, uh, I've got one of the Ryzen um so i've got a uh, eight core oct core so it's eight cores 16 threads and it's 4.5 gigahertz um this is a really really powerful cpu and, and cpu is the main thing that ksp drains so that was like what i built my new computer around i say new it was a new uh, a little while back my um, old computer can even run ro so well, as you say it can it can run ro it can't run ro no my old one couldn't run it at all like wow. Even with real solar system, wouldn't even launch properly. Yeah, it's uh, it's really heavy on the uh, on the old computer. Um, that's for sure. Yeah. So that was that's the start. Uh, I also have thirty two gigabytes of RAM, which is is necessary. <laughs> like, um, yeah, it eats it. It just gobbles RAM. Um, so that's like the yeah. That's how I physically do it. And, and as for how like, it takes a lot of time to design things but like particularly with the tooling costs and everything like it's really encouraged to reuse like rocket designs like you build one rocket design that works and then um and then you just keep using that and then you need a larger launch vehicle and then you just keep using that launch vehicle if that makes sense um so that keeps the amount of design work you have to do down um oh i just tweak scaled the wrong thing whoopsie daisy that messed a bunch of things up can oh there we go um yeah so like i've designed you know you just keep iterating on launch vehicles you know similar to to reality really um you know because you have tooling costs you don't want to have to retool uh, a new launch vehicle or anything so almost like taking like real life design approaches to to things if that makes sense um but yeah like i think the reason i'm fine with it is just because it's it is so much more challenging you know, like I can do normal like stock Kerbal. I can probably do in my sleep at this point. You know, I've done it so, so much. 
um so i think because it's that extra challenge and, and because it takes all that extra time is is part of why i enjoy it so much um yeah that's probably what i'd what i'd chalk it up to um i hope that sort of answers your <laughs> how i can how i can bear it i guess um hope that answers I... your question lag um hard oh you're right I'm... there you're sort of breaking up quite badly oh yeah I think internet is is not on our side perhaps <laughs> you just had a whole long spiel I guess you'd catch it on the on the stream if that broke up for you is he there what's happened to him I think Axel has uh I think Axel might have internet problems. Uh, well, I don't know if you can hear me, Axel, but I uh, can no longer hear you. Um, so I think we might head on to our next person. Uh, okay, you do hear me. Yeah, I can't. You're, you're completely silent. So, I but I think... Uh, killing oh, me. You are sort of popping in, yeah. in and out. Yeah, yeah, no. There we go. Oh, there we go. He's back. He's sort of back, yeah. But I think we'll probably head on to yeah. the next... Uh, on to Simone. Uh, yeah, it's, it's around pro- that time too. Yeah, yeah. Oh, well, I hope you've enjoyed the stream. Thank you for coming on. Yeah. Lovely to have a chat. Yeah. Um, hopefully, yes. I, I somewhat answered your uh, answered your question. Yes. And yeah. Um, yeah, thank you so much for your support. Yeah, yeah no so problem. Reason I had you on. Yeah. Great yeah. stuff. And I'll yeah, uh, my... talk to you another time. Bye. Yeah. Awesome. Okay. So we'll bring Simone on in a second. Uh, I'm just checking what we have left to do on this thing, but it's coming along really rather nicely, actually. Um, This is the wrong kind of condor. We want a crew condor. Condor, there we go. Just for sense of scale. Where are the docking ports in these things? For real, where do I put the docking ports? They are somewhere. Wait, this is another cargo one. Where's the crew one? Oh, there we go. It's actually called Crew Condor, not just normal Condor. Okay, that makes a lot of sense. There we go. This is the one with the docking port. Okay. We're not actually going to connect this because that will slow the game down to Look even more of a crew. Oh, someone's donated. Luris! We need to go through a bunch of donation messages. I will do that in a second. Um, let me just Let me just line this up without breaking the game, hopefully. There we go. Okay, cool. Right, let's go through some. Uh, let's go through some donation messages. Oh, let's move my heat back out, and uh, then we'll get our last patron on, and then we've got. Um, then we've got lightning on. We've got Andrew on, maybe at the end. So let's have a little look at the donation messages. So the last one that I read was Simone's one. Which was, yay, Steak, you're my biggest fan. Then we had Owen said, I think you need a big fairing so you can launch the rocket. Um, (laughs) This is not getting launched into space. This is getting built in space. Uh, I think a fairing that large would break physics itself, let alone the game. Uh, The Venture Star has donated. Beardy, it's me, another generic character coming to bother you with donations. Trust me, I am not bothered by <laughs> donations. They're greatly appreciated. Please let me spread my wings. I, do, I don't I do want to fry the crews with my aft, uh, the aft-facing antimatter engines. Angle them out so I don't get tried for war crimes when the engines are ignited. Yes, I am going to angle them out. I was just designing it first, um, but I will angle them out uh, at the end. I just want to get it all working before I start messing around with angles, if that makes any sense. Steak donated with 25 pounds. Thank you very, very much, Steak. Just got a dethrone lags a lot from top donation spot while she's in the voice chat. 
Olaf donated again. I want to be the very best like no penguin ever was. Thank you again, Olaf. I'm actually blown away by how generous you guys are. And then, of course, we just had Lurus. Another ship, Billy Plus, my 3D printer is beginning to strike. Yeah, so Lurus is actually 3D printing um, a model of the Clark at the moment. If you haven't seen it on the Discord, it's, it's very exciting. Um, but it's broken his printer like five times already. Um, regardless, let's get Simone on here. I'll ask if they're ready. Okay, so everyone so far has been STEM. Let's see if Simone can break that trend. Everyone, shot glass is ready. If they're an engineer, you have to take two. But if they're STEM, then you take one. As ready as can be. Okay. Hello. Hiya. Hi, how's it going? Pretty good. Yeah, so uh, where are you from, Simone? Yeah, you'll have to excuse the uh, the background noise. Um, I can't hear but... the background noise. Discord uh, yeah. sorted it out. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm, I'm, I'm sure you'll hear it in, uh, in a moment. But um, yeah, I'm from the uh, the Netherlands. Oh, okay yeah cool um are you are you doing stem are you an engineer uh well for the alcoholics here um yes yes i am <laughs> so you are an engineer what kind of engineer no i'm not an engineer are though uh i have um like i'm currently uh doing a bachelor in chemistry oh. uh, i have started for my uh, my first year um mm -hmm. so it's it's been pretty easy so far I, um having friends who do chemistry degrees i don't think it stays easy for long um, no, no, it's been, um, well, I've, uh, like, I've, I've only finished my first semester, and, um, well, I mean, second semester does look like it's going to be quite a nightmare already, um, <laughs> yeah. so I'm sure I'll, I'll have lots of fun in the future. Got all that to look forward to. Awesome. Exactly. Well, how long have you been, uh, how long have you been watching the channel, then? Uh, I'd say it was around, uh, Beyond Kerbal, like, the 20 like i don't know the 20th episode or something oh okay so like relatively so it, it, yeah it was before the um yeah it was before the the, the for all kerbal kind that's for sure but uh, i'm not sure if it was like the the first or the like, like not the, the the 20th or the 21st uh beyond kerbal <laughs> oh, I, I did hear a giggle in the background <laughs> yeah that's the uh, the background noise oh okay i see i see okay yeah so like relatively Relatively recent. Though. I think Olaf has, yeah, definitely taken the cake with uh, having been here yeah. for, for ages and ages and ages. Um, yeah, I'd say it was like, uh, I don't know, like uh, 20 months by now? 24, 22? Yeah, yeah. Oh, awesome, though. Um, well, yeah, well, thank you for, for being a supporter of the channel. Um, yeah, are there any, like, questions you want to ask and stuff? Anything? Uh, I mean, uh, nothing in particular I have to ask. <laughs> uh I've mostly been uh, been interested in your uh, like realism overhaul uh, playthrough. Oh yeah. Um, it's it it ha it's it's what got me into to realism overhaul, um, which I can say has not been a good decision, but um, <laughs> it has been quite fun. Yeah, no, it's a lot of fun. It is. Uh, it's a lot though, isn't it? Like it's. Yeah, you can't just do like a in stock. Like you can just be like you can that day be like, hey, I want to go to, I want to go to Duna today. <sighs> Then, oh then no i like, <laughs> you have to like physically plan it like a day or two in advance if yeah. you want to go interplanetary especially if you haven't actually started up a uh, playthrough yet right. like getting through any, the um, any any crewed missions i mean like for all couple kind is my first experience of rp1 like so oh like, yeah, yeah that's like as i'm playing like, yeah i've um I've had quite a few playthroughs by now. Um, currently, I'm doing another one, and I have yet to actually, you know, put a put a man uh, outside of or, uh, low Earth orbit. Um, well, I'm about I, to. Do uh, that. <laughs> about yeah, to. so I say I say we're at the about the same uh, tech or not the tech level, but the the proficiency level of uh, realism yeah, overall. Yeah. Yeah, cool. Yeah. So yeah, the, the next mission that. And got planned in for all couple kind is the um is the crewed lunar orbit which um might kill its crew uh we'll see we'll see what happens hopefully it won't um, yeah hopefully <laughs> i haven't actually flown that mission yet um i've actually been um obviously been busy with beyond kerbal and, and everything and trying to get all of that sort of all that stuff finished for before moving on to some other projects perhaps but um I'm trying to figure out what my train of thought there was. <laughs> I just completely missed <laughs> it. Completely missed uh, understandable. It, whatever that was. Um, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was just saying, like, 
Um, I haven't had a chance to, to actually work on that video yet, but we have been doing uh, a few things to do with the install. Like I've been working on some new spacesuits, which is quite cool. Um, some new Orlan, you know, some new spacesuits that look a lot better, uh, at least in my opinion. <laughs> So hopefully that'll uh, that'll be interesting hey, in the next hey, episode. Hey, we're also, we got Kerbal Constructs, so we're expanding the space centers. Um, so we can actually have multiple launch pads and launch from them instead of just having one magic shape-shifting launch pad. Yeah, the, uh, the, what's it called, the Cape Canaveral um, thing. I don't know what it's called, the the, the exact mod, but the, the, the one that adds the realistic Cape Canaveral mod, um, like launch sites yeah, and stuff. Yeah. We're not using that mod, but we, but we are doing something akin to that you know um yeah yeah because of course, the the um, one yeah that one doesn't have the uh, i mean it does have sort of like extra launch pads but they're all unlimited like tonnage so they're not yeah, really yeah. uh yeah they're not really fair yeah um of course yeah but like you know n9 doesn't launch from from cape canaveral and i'm sorry i'm launching from baikonur so um yeah yeah, but like we're using that, you know, the, those 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 same mods to expand our own space centers and do something <laughs> akin to that. So, um, yeah, you know, we've got that to look forward to, I guess. Exactly. Um, what's the? If you don't mind me asking, like, so what's your sort of been your favorite sort of video then that you've watched or favorite moment perhaps? Uh, from the Beyond, uh, I don't know, I, I haven't really uh, re-watched the Beyond Kerbal uh, series um, recently, so I can't really say anything about that. Mm -hmm. uh, but for the Realism Overhaul uh, playthrough, it's been, uh, well, I mean, you probably uh, probably get this a lot, but the um, the one with the, the first Kerbal, the oh, yeah, the yeah. music video and stuff, yeah, that, that was really quite epic. Cool, I'm, gl I'm glad pe people, I was blown away by how much people appreciate it, because, like, I, I wrote that arrangement um i was originally going to use it in uh, the finale of beyond kerbal so i wrote it and then i recorded it um and then you know this series sort of fell by the wayside um, and, like, it wasn't finished like the, the the piano sounds in it are just like the stock news score piano playing like i i had yeah, the, um, just from uh yeah yeah like i hadn't got around to, to actually playing it myself recording it myself i just had this like version i've thrown together just to see what it would sound like so the violin playing was mine and the singing was obviously mine but it was only like one take the whole thing was one take of singing you know so it wasn't really my best, best singing either so you know like i just, I mean, I just even it. even <laughs> <laughs> i'm glad you like i say like, i'm really glad people enjoy it. like I, I just had it like on my hard drive and i was about to export the video i was like hmm, I, I can't find the right track for this section and i looked at the length of the section and i looked at the length of the thing and just went eh screw it and just dragged it on and then exported it and uploaded it and then was just blown away by, you know, by the yeah i mean the the comments and, uh, and stuff on all the video are pretty like they're pretty much focused on the on the the music video itself not much on the um on the on the actual contents <laughs> of the yeah, yeah, for most sure. people it was uh it was just going oh i thought that was a woman singing <laughs> um which you know I, okay i don't need to, <laughs> how to take that but um but, uh, yeah yeah but it, it does it does make me happy that people people enjoyed it i guess but um, yeah i'm just shrinking down this uh this giant mirror I've stuck at the end of this because it doesn't need to be the size that it was. Um, let's yeah, see. it's it doesn't even like the 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 image the reference image doesn't even show it to be like that large. It's no, it's, it's just a, it's it's a little too big. Like it's it's. What I've just put yeah, it to is better. Uh, it I should be about like the engines so that they don't fire at it. So yeah, let's... from from the from the reference image, it's about like three times the the width of the crew module. Yeah, I think what I've got it to now, because my centrifuge is a little small. I don't know whether to use the small centrifuge or the big centrifuge. Um, yeah, from the one actually, like the Clark one. Um, oh yeah, it's called a particle accelerator or something. It just like so happens to have crew in it. Here we go, centrifuge ring. Particle accelerator with crew in it. That does not sound healthy. But... <laughs> what a great idea, right? Yeah. Um, yeah, because it's a big ring, so it, like, its main purpose is to produce antimatter. But I guess that makes sense for an antimatter-powered ship, though, that it should have a ring that can produce antimatter. So I might use this one. Yeah. 
Actually, yeah, this looks. This is gonna look better. I'll use this. One I one think. One. I think the 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 most of the antimatter should be R for right? Because the actual actually producing antimatter with the particle accelerator isn't isn't that feasible. No, no. Like it, most it, of it, it will be harvested, but it just helps, yeah. I guess, to be able to. Um... I guess it'd help if you if you're stuck or something. Yeah. Not have uh... have a, have an option. Yeah. There we go. Perfect. Yeah, that, looks, that looks pretty cool, actually. I like that. It does look very good. Yeah. There we are. Yeah, like it was. It was the um. There was the response to the to the music in that video that um. Cool caused me to to make a, a second uh, music channel, you know, and do what I did um in the Vostok yeah. video, you know, where I or where I did a cover I was actually proud of, which was uh, everybody wants to rule the world. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It was quite fitting too, as well. Yeah, I, I see. That was that was one that like, like I actually I was actually proud of. Like, <laughs> the, <laughs> I want to redo the outro one. I think I think that would be nice to to do at some point. Would be to redo it, um, and with like proper piano and and you know redo the vocals. Like I've got the arrangement. I just need the time to to re-record it. I think um, and appease my my inner perfectionist self, but. Um, <laughs> But yeah, as you know, they, they, they everybody wants to rule the world. One, I was I was very very proud of. So I'm glad that people people enjoyed that. Um, yeah, and I think you should be. Oh, thank you. I'm doing a cover for the finale of the series. I think I mentioned it's going to be, uh, it's going to be maybe a three minute long, just cinematic. The whole thing's going to be a cinematic, bring the whole series to a hopefully what people find to be a, a satisfying conclusion. So it's going to be uh, to a song. I'm not going to spoil what song it will be. But, um, Ooh, exciting! Yeah. Building up the hype. Yeah, let's get that get that hype train moving. Exactly. Yeah, I think this is actually almost done. Um, it does look quite finished. There's nothing really extra to add anymore. The, the fuel tanks, the radiators, engines, sail, pretty much been added. You can you can focus a bit more on the on the details, but I'd say it's pretty finished. Yeah, I mean it doesn't really need to be the most thing in the world like unlike the clark which you know actually had a actual you know, had a proper purpose had to have all these different perfectly calibrated modules and all these different things that it brought along as well i had to have like the crew modules and everything like this yeah. um this is really it's for a cinematic so it just has to look the part and like still work like the engines have to be able to fire but it doesn't really have to be able to support a crew for yeah, yeah exactly. and it's only for one for now for one episode anymore anyway so it's not uh, exactly <laughs> it's not something right. everyone will uh, be will be like uh, looking over uh, every episode anymore so or, i mean yeah well the clock they'll be saying, looking at it for one episode basically yeah the clock had to stand the the test of time you know <laughs> like it had to be used yeah. for an entire solar system of colonization so um, exactly where is this not so much um I'm really happy with how it's turned out, though. I'm pretty proud of this. Um, this is all full of LH2. I think this is... Uh, so, yeah, I think filling this with antimatter is going to make this prohibitively expensive. Yes, it's costing... Yeah. If I fill it with... Let's see, if I fully fill it with antimatter, how much does this cost? You better. If I wouldn't launch it with full of antimatter. This would cost four billion funds <laughs> <laughs> that's uh that's a bit that's a little bit expensive yeah that's, uh, that's quite a bit that's that's quite a few funds that um yeah let's just bring that down i don't know why it costs negative funds at the moment and probably like a some weird part or uh like a i don't know yeah it must be uh, a worked part or something let's get it to a yeah. positive number of funds there we go uh and then i'll top the antimatter up right let's see does that engine miss the i wish i could zoom out more i can see if it hits the actual thing um if you can angle down or something then uh, here from the like, from top down or something it's just the scale of this thing it's hard to visualize it i think that i need to be like a little bit more like one try and calculate it like <laughs> it's a simple pythagorean but that's probably too much effort just to yeah, <laughs> build the I engines that's better. That's better. Um, yeah. actually i think let's so that's honestly actually, i think that's fine i'm looking at the 
Chris or so. Yeah, I see what you mean about the background noise. <laughs> but, yeah. Yeah, I think that's actually okay. Um, oh, that's a bit too much. Yeah, I think that's fine. Let's try that. I think well, I actually want to get this out and, and take it for a spin. It's not fine. You'll uh, you'll see what happens. Yeah. It's a good test. See if it irradiates itself or not. <laughs> yeah. So I would have liked to move the um, engines a bit further out, um, extend them a bit further out than they are, but uh, this was as far as, as I could move it. Um, yeah, you have to attach them radially as well from the the support, yeah. like the the inner support tube. So you know, I could make the the mirror a little smaller, even still, that might that might make that a little easier. Oh no, it doesn't go any smaller than this. Okay, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's fine. That misses it. Looks a little bit janky having engine nozzles that <laughs> extend off to one side, but yeah, but whatever. Okay, let's have a little look at these tanks. Um, okay, I'm gonna look at the antimatter reactor. See if there's anything I need to adjust. I think it's fine. Freethinker says it will overheat after one second, <laughs> which is probably true. Um, but we'll give it a go. I think actually, let's 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 launch this thing and, and see what happens with it. Um, let's disable these the couplers because we don't need them. Let's see how much this thing weighs. How much is this thing? This is uh, six thousand tons. Oh, that's not too heavy. Yeah, that's not too bad. I forget, did I actually put a command Just thing on this? I don't think I actually put a probe on this or anything that can control it. Um, but probably <laughs> if, I, if I did that. Um, uh, let's put like a little command deck on or something at the back. Unless you can control from a centrifuge module, can you control from... Hmm. Reaction wheels... Actually, I think you might be able to. Would make sense if you could, because you know that's where the crew should be able to yeah, to live. Yeah. I think maybe you can. Let's set that as the root part and then launch it and see what happens. <laughs> cool. Okay, we've got a venture star. Let's launch this and see uh, how badly physics breaks. Uh, I need some <laughs> crew. That's it. Uh, let's pray to the kraken. Um, for some reason I can't hire any crew. <laughs> uh oh. Uh, that's a little. Hey, I guess the astronaut complex. Oh no, here I can. I can. I can. It's. It's. You got to go through the um, the USI, the USI ah. thing. Okay, that's fine. Uh, let's hire. Let's hire a pilot. A single pilot. He's got to be fearless. He's got to be really stupid and really courageous to go on board the test flight of this thing. Especially knowing that the engines are possibly pointed towards you. Yes, possibly. Like the person designing it didn't even check if the engines were or were <laughs> not pointing at you. Uh, let's put him in the command deck. Okay, like so someone said back. earlier, crew safety is uh, <laughs> number like 256 priority. Yep, something like that. Okay, so we're going to have to hack gravity to do this, uh, to launch this thing and then cheat it into space. Right, let's launch it. Let's see what happens with this thing. Uh, normally you could just uh, like start from orbit in the simulation, uh, like the KCT simulator. Mm. Yeah, I don't have sim don't have Good. simulations in this. In this yeah. alone, I don't want to add any more mods. Yeah, I didn't add reaction control <laughs> thrusters or anything. I just want to test whether the main engines work. Um, Do the the main engines gimbal? Because I sure hope not. I don't think they gimbal. I similarly hope that they don't gimbal. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I guess our one crew member will find out the hard way. <laughs> oh well. At least it will uh, smell like chicken for a while in the in the <laughs> test flight. <laughs> yeah, It'll be interesting for sure. Let's see what happens. Freethinker's got a lot of very sensible suggestions in the chat, but it's <laughs> crazy if he thinks I'm going to listen to to sensible we don't, suggestions while making this. We don't do sensible. <laughs> orbit, so we just orbit around solitude. 
And it's in space. Okay, it's uh oh it looks the part. Oh hello, crack and attack. Oh no. Oh. <laughs> oh no I think it needs some auto strutting. Oh that does not look good. Mm, this needs a lot of auto struts. I kind of forgot about struts. <laughs> um I mean it looks the part though. Kinda. At least I think. <laughs> Like the yeah, I mean you got the the, the basic design and stuff, the basic, the engines. The layout, yeah. yeah. The engines aren't the the, engines the, the, nice. the same though. The. I mean yeah, oh, pretty yeah, much. Yeah, look the, when it heats up, it looks awesome. Yeah. It has overheated in like a split second though, but it does look <laughs> cool. Yeah, I mean if it's a, if like the the heat and stuff looks pretty realistic from the looks... from the yeah. I can yeah, I can see the resemblance to the actual spacecraft, which is which is nice. Um, I might replace these graphene radiators here because I wanted like shielding, a shielding look because it has those, but these don't. These shouldn't light up and remove mm. heat. Um, I mean, this is only really for a for a, for a cinematic. So as I said, it doesn't actually need to work. It just needs to look kind of cool. Yeah, it'd be nice if it did work, but uh, <laughs> it doesn't look yeah. like it. yeah, <laughs> it's gonna work that well. Um, yeah, this is fine. I think this is good enough. I need to strut it a lot, um, so that it's to remain stable, but, uh, yeah, like in theory it would work, but I'm not actually going to use this to, ex in to explore other solar systems. As I said, it it's a cinematic, but it's going to be part yeah. of, so, um, I think now it, it looks pretty good. I think, yeah, I'm happy with mm -hmm. that. Um, I am going to um, ring Lightning Gamer now. So we've been chatting for a little over 20 minutes. So Oh, yeah, that's, short, that's fine. But, um, yeah, so I hope you have enjoyed having a little chat. It's been lovely to talk to you. We're currently... Let me look. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven for seven on STEM people. Um, yeah. So best it's, of luck uh, it's with... Uh, smart Boy Channel. Smart Boy Channel, indeed. Um, best of luck with your degree. And uh, thank you so much for all your support. Yeah, thank you for uh, for having me. Yeah, well, th thanks for coming onto the stream. It's been a lot of fun, and uh, awesome. Yeah. See you another time, perhaps. Okay. Yeah, have a uh, have a good rest of the stream. we will do. Okay. See ya. Bye. Right. Let's ring. Let's ring lightning. And then maybe we'll have Andrew on for a little bit at the end. Okay. Then we just need to strut this thing to <laughs> to high heaven. Hello. 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 How's it going? Well, pretty good. Are you enjoying the stream? Yeah, and the house didn't burn down between then and now. <laughs> oh no, your house did burn down. Ah, oh, that's oh. that nobody on stream's gonna get. <laughs> But, not uh, not my house, other people's houses. Oh, that's all right then. That no, doesn't matter. Yeah. Um, well, how's it going? Where are you from, Lightning? I've never uh, spoken before. I'm from the great U.S. of A., located in the state of Oklahoma. All oh, right. Okay. Oh, that's why you asked if um, <laughs> what the time was in Freedom Units. Okay. That, <laughs> yeah. That makes more sense now. Okay. And uh, what are you sort of? Oh wait, are you are you STEM? Are you a STEM person? I love STEM. Now you're gonna be disappointed. I'm actively don't have a degree in engineering of some sort, but in a couple months I will be getting trained as a combat engineer. So <gasps> I, I kind of count engineer. that. He is an engineer. I mean, stonks there. I mean, the degrees are expensive enough here. The degrees in the U.S. Like, goodness gracious me. Um, yeah, <laughs> in the yeah. I mean, if you can get trained while well, getting paid, then. You know, yeah. Credit to you, right? Um, Exploiting the government for something. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, anyway, so yeah, so I've, I was gonna. My brain's turning into a bit of a mush this late into the stream, and <laughs> so was there anything that you wanted to talk about specifically, or? Uh, not much. I've just been sitting here admiring the beautiful thing that's being created over the past two, three, four hours. However yeah, long it's I been. Mean, I wouldn't give it that much credit, but um, 
Hey, it's better but... than what I can do. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, even, yeah, I'll take that. Yeah. Even um... with the like two thousand something hours I have on KSB, I still uh, am quite crap at building. I have long lost, long since lost count of um, what my hours in KSP are. I... Yeah, because I used to play on Steam, but obviously as soon as you start modding and you're having multiple installs, you would just make a, a new directory, so it stops counting your hours. So yeah, I have no idea um, how many hours I have in this game. I sh- it must be in like the to fifteen thousand range at this point. Like I've spent so much of my life in, <laughs> in this game. Um, yeah, so as I said, I could probably play it in my sleep. That's why I got into realism overhaul. I mean, I it was even thousands of hours in, even when I started making Beyond Kerbal and stuff, I, I swore I would never do realism overhaul just because it seemed so complicated. And then here I am. The very thing I swore to destroy. Um, yeah, it's hard. It definitely... I've attempted it a couple times ever since I saw you guys start doing your real, realism overhaul run, and it's a... Uh... I have not made it to like a full Mercury type flight yet. Mm. I I just can't seem to get that far. And when I'm there, it's already like 64 and I'm like, well, I've already way past timeline. Got to restart. Yeah, Try to make yeah. it quicker. I mean, I don't know how we're ahead of the timeline to be honest. The reason we set the science settings the way we did, because N9 was like, told me that in his other playthrough, he'd really struggled to get to a moon landing, like before the mid seventies. And I was like, Oh, okay then. Um, and I was just, so we didn't like up things too much but um yeah that played a factor in us choosing the settings that we did and then <laughs> but i think just the competitive nature of it you know not wasting a single day of time and you know um sort of min maxing everything has, has been the reason why we've we've gone through as far as fast as we have um but uh but yeah um when did you sort of hop on to the the channel because obviously you started watching my solaris streams and donating obscene amounts of money <laughs> to my uh streams like when did you start watching i i think the first videos i watched when when you were coming out of cloud of warfare back in 2015 or 16 whenever that was all right like all the way back in the day then yeah but i watched them and then i didn't watch really much of that else it's just whenever i saw the ksp stuff pop up i was like oh yeah i'll watch that and then I got really, really hooked with the fall of Kerbin stuff, watching the ships fight, massive mm-hmm. battleship battles that I always st- tried to make them myself and would fail epically and just be like, yep, I'm gonna stick to watching. Yeah, those weren't those weren't fun to play, I can t- <laughs> tell you that much. Uh, at the frames we were we were dealing with and how long those took. I mean, a single one of those naval battles would maybe take a whole day, like nine hours or so to f- record. Um you know, I, like it wasn't. It was. It was fun watching them afterwards and sending the music to them and, and seeing the comments. And as I, I was talking about this earlier, but you know the community and everything. But but it, it was not like a fun war game to play. <laughs> you know, yeah. Which, um... But maybe you can try again if when a uh, KSP two comes out, maybe Possibly. it'll be more optimized for that. Yeah, a lot of people have been have been asking about that actually. Um, you know, in KSP two, could I maybe bring bring the the warfare stuff back and. I think that'd be a lot of that'd be a lot of fun, um, you know. If it's stable, big asterisk, big if. But if it is, I would be down. I think something that would be quite cool to do would be to do um, something Macy Dean esque. You know, like as soon as KSP two comes out, do like stock warfare stuff, because um, stock stuff always gets like more views than modded stuff anyway by a long shot. I mean, you know, look at any Matt Lown video. You can see that. Yeah. Um, people want to see what you can do with what came with the game, not exactly. with what people modded the heck out of. <laughs> well, yeah, not the limitate. You know what you've been given, essentially, rather than um, you know. Whereas you know, obviously, I can do you can do whatever you want with mods. So it's it's less maybe less impressive. Although obviously, for things, I you know, you still set your own boundaries. Like I still wanted for like a stock but continued install with um, with Beyond Kerbal and endurance so obviously all the things i've done have still been extremely extremely challenging and time consuming but you know still aren't maybe quite as impressive um but you know all the things i've done they, they just aren't possible in stock like you you can't make a floating colony <laughs> in stock. yeah um it's but, you know, impossible 
Yeah, and I've even sat there and thought, like, man, I kind of want to play stock again because they came out with the, you know, the comets and stuff. And mm. but then I was sitting there thinking, like, I don't think I could ever play stock again and enjoy mm. it. No, it's... just because it seems too simple. Like you can be in orbit in like two, three launches. Yeah, no same energy from me. Yeah, I don't think I could ever, ever go back. Really. Um... I remember I played KSP stock for a long time. I was I used to watch. Um, did you ever watch? I think it's HG Gaming. Was it whoever the guy with the, the artificial gravity was? Uh, no, it was H Hot Gaming. That was it. Hot Gaming. Harvey from that. He always did exclusively stock stuff. And um, but yeah, I guess when you play the game for a while, yeah, there's just a limit to how far that can go. How far your interest can really carry you. Um, yeah. But I think it's just because it's such a moddable game. Yeah, there's a whole a whole world out there of mods. Um, yeah, no, I was actually mentioned it earlier in the chat for stream. I was wondering if they, since you're obviously doing kind of like the interstellar, intersolar type thing, that if they'd make a RSS dash KSP intertwined, so you can go from Kerbin to Earth. So you can go from a Kerbal and then go to a different solar system to Sol. I guess I mean that's what uh, Scott Manley did, isn't it, in the uh, Interstellar Quest? But I don't know. I mean, for me, like the Kerbal Kerbin system exists in its own little universe where things are much, much denser and smaller. And you yeah, know, some people ask like, oh, some people ask that if my plan is for this spacecraft here to to find Earth and have that be at the start of like for all Kerbal kind. It's like, uh, no, <laughs> that's not what's happening here. Yeah, they're not invasion connected. of the little green men. Yeah, oh, that would be quite funny. Well, to be fair, though, in for all Kerbal kind, they are Kerbals. Like, we did have a discussion, should we make them humans and actually use text to replace or use the visors to hide their skin or whatever and, and say they're humans? I was like, honestly, like, the fact that Kerbals is half the charm um, and half the fun, so... Yeah, I maybe. Mean, that and kept them Kerbals. Why we've got, like, John F. Kerman and, <laughs> and things, you know? It's just, like, Kerbals mirroring our history, that's all. Um yeah, that I mean, was yeah, that's anyway. that the idea. Game wouldn't be interesting without the little green guys. Exactly. Um, and all their all their facial expressions. And all their screams as they plunge to their deaths. Yeah. <laughs> At least in my playthroughs, maybe not so much. <laughs> oh, yeah. I've I've probably should be in a prison for the war crimes I've committed in this game. <laughs> I mean, if you're talking about war crimes, I mean, you're talking to the guy who did. Uh... <laughs> three warfare series so when it comes well, to war crimes i'm your guy don't say that out that, of context um, that, that's an actual war crime i mean this is like whole hundreds of guys stranded out in space not going to get them because you're just too lazy to build the ship to go get them <laughs> when you can just spend a couple bits of money to get new guys i mean yeah well why would you you know um uh, trying to figure out a good part to to put as like the the shielding uh, <sighs> along the uh, shielding from the from these nozzles. I yeah, mean, how about just use the big panels, the big B nine panels? Yeah, those are probably your best. They it's aesthetically pleasing. I I don't think there's much you could do unless you could recolor those panels. But I'm thinking you can do that. It'd be cool if you could have like a square heat shield you could actually put there because I mean obviously they're right next to giant engines. Yeah, I think these will work just fine. These sort of fit the general aesthetic pretty well as well, and I can connect them to each other, which makes things a bit easier. So, yeah, I'll use these structural panels. I think that works just fine. Yeah, we'll go with this. There we go. So yeah, so you were quite into the Stellaris streams, weren't you? Like, yeah, I actually played. Yeah, I actually played quite a bit of it, on yeah. off and on, really heavily modded itself. Yeah, I've never really mentioned the Stellaris mods just because there's so much in the in the vanilla game, you know, that I haven't seen because it's just so much time commitment to play even a single game. Yeah. You know, I just never had the time to to go and you know to to sort of <laughs> be uh, interested in in mods really. Yeah, but mods do make it interesting. Like the there's one that makes the ship smaller, so they're not you know 
as big and obscenely huge compared to the solar system that they're in. But there was one I did play actually, which was the New Horizons, uh, which was the the you near know, the Star Trek. Is it New Horizons? The the Star Trek mod for it, which is actually yeah incredible. Like it's amazing what they did. Um, yeah, they got mean. a Star Trek, a Halo, a Warhammer 30k. So how well fleshed out is the Halo one? Because last time I checked, it was just a few models, and that was it. I think it's more. It's definitely more. They got more models down, but compared to the progress of other mods, it's definitely behind. Yeah, it wasn't like fleshed out sort of worldwide, if that makes sense. Like it was. It, they had the ship models, but that that was about it. It was almost like a ship pack last time I I sort of checked in on it. Yeah. Yeah, I've actually been watching the. Personally, I've been watching the Mass Effect mods coming out. Oh, they actually I'm have sure a, those are cool. Yeah, that must be amazing. Yeah. Yeah, they've actually have a big, big mod pack came out that's actually got like starting solar systems of all the species and stuff. And no way! Oh, so did back... they, did they have like? Did they actually have like the Reapers as the as the end game threat then? Yeah. Christ! Oh, yeah. that is cool. They got they got the collectors in the Galactic Core. They got um they got like clusters with like one hyperlane connecting them, and then there's like a cluster cluster out to resemble the Mass Effect the oh sorry just kind of burped there <laughs> but the uh, resembled you know the gateways and everything the, yeah yeah it's not just every system connected they have their little branches out which i cool, love because it makes yeah, yeah it makes interesting ch yeah ch choke points there that you can hold on to hmm. that's really cool no, i hadn't heard anything about that that's awesome though yeah it's the i'll have to go back to my subscribed and see what the actual name of it is oh yeah mass effect beyond the relays beta uh -huh. it's definitely fleshed out yeah, that's cool yeah see that's the, those are the sort of mods i went for you know not, not instead of individual ones like a full total conversion i, I do like i am partial to one of those um yeah that's why i did um so I did play the Star Trek one. I mean, Stellaris is basically already Star Trek, right? So it was just so perfectly <laughs> suited for it. Um, I was like, okay, this has got to be amazing. And it didn't disappoint. Yeah. The only thing I wish is they made... I don't know about longer, but I mean, the the multiplayer would be more interesting. Cause, I mean, I like, I like the multiplayer on it, but it just can be so drawn out that yeah. a lot of people, they don't want to stick through it. Mm. No, like, never, they'll be um... like... I've never played the multiplayer. I've actually never played with anyone. Yeah, it can be it can be fun, but yeah, there it it sucks when you get like halfway through your game, you have to stop because you know people gotta go to sleep, and then you just never get back together to finish the game. Yeah. So you got this half finished game. It's like, come on, guys, we're doing so good, but it's definitely fun because you can be more bold, especially yeah. if you got friends. You can be like, well, I'm gonna be more aggressive because I know this guy's gonna back me up. Imagine people needing sleep. Yeah. Am I right? Gosh, how dare they? <laughs> what's 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 sleep? As a uni student, <laughs> I do not know anymore. That's for sure. Do you have any like questions you want to ask about the channel? By the way, like anything you uh, have interest? Not much. I mean, it's like I said before. Everyone's kind of come through and asked what they wanted to ask. So, yeah. I mean. Any questions I had was pretty much answered throughout. I'm just mainly excited for when we get to do multiplayer groups against everyone to see who's the better gamers. <laughs> I mean, it's not going to be me, that's for sure. I can, um, I can finally um, hand Olaf uh, his own butt on a silver platter there. <laughs> <clears throat> what do you think of um, how these panels are looking? Though I think it looks more stocker-like. It looks more like a stocker-like version of the yeah of the I, Adventure Star. I think it actually looks better. Um, it, I saw when you kind of did that, uh, when you changed their texture, there was that solid white. I don't know if that would look... I guess I'd make it look sleeker. The way they look now, they're like in a an industrial... Welded all oh, slapped yeah. on there. Welded together, yeah. Um, I'm not sure. Well, I, well, I prefer that. It makes sense for them to be solid white, since they're supposed to be reflecting any like radiation. Yeah. And I get if you make them solid white, it would match your giant tanks there. But... Yeah, actually, I like that. 
don't know. It does look more industrial though when it's uh, a sort of surfacey look. But I mean, hey, in the end, it's your ship. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I'm undecided. I'll see what the chat says. Um, let's see what the chat says. Oh, I didn't want to duplicate that. There we go. Okay, cool. This is the last panel. And then uh, might take it for another little test spin, see if it blows itself up or not. Then uh, probably call it a night. I mean, it's been a long, it's been a long stream. Um, you know, been been chatting to a lot of people, but it's it's been a lot of fun. It's been really lovely to sort of to get to know some of my supporters. You know, and I guess you know firsthand say see how much it means and yeah, and it's been really nice. Yeah, that's um, probably about like midnight for you almost, isn't it? Uh, well, it's twenty to eleven. Um, but it's been, it has been a long ass stream. <laughs> um, but yeah, it is getting late. Uh, I do need to go to bed by eleven. Really, I'm sleeping a lot at the moment because you're know, still recovering from from COVID. So, no, well, I still got it. So, um, yeah, that I need my beauty sleep. <laughs> it, it, yeah, COVID wasn't really my favorite thing either. It's definitely a do not kicker. I do yeah, I, I honestly told people I'd prefer the flu over COVID. I prefer I don't think puking it's been my guts up. Um, bad as flu for me, actually. Well, flu for me, I just puke a lot. So I prefer puking than not being able to breathe because I actually had breathing problems near mine. Oh, really? Yeah, I'd be sitting there perfectly fine one minute, and then the next it would be like I just ran a marathon. Right. See, I've got asthma, but. Um... Thankfully, didn't have any breathing problems with it. I haven't even got the cough, which is really good because I can continue doing YouTube stuff without deafening everyone every 10 seconds with a cough into the microphone. But yeah, it's just generally been fatigue syndromes, uh, yeah, symptoms for me, um, which thankfully hasn't been too hard to, to cope with. But yeah, I've seen a lot of people getting, getting it much, much worse. Yeah. Well, at least your guys' country's somewhat doing something about it. <laughs> somewhat. <laughs> Not somewhat. by much. <laughs> it's, uh... Yeah. Honest to say, American politics and stuff has been so bad that I, I mean, I play with a couple of Dutch guys and stuff, and I tell them, don't come to America right now. <laughs> it is. I have honestly not seen a piece of international news other than the whole Ukraine Russia thing in months. Yeah. We'll try and veer away from the uh, we'll try and veer away from the politics, I guess. But um, yeah, N nine uh, <laughs> N nine has no illusions about uh, how uh, how things are. If that makes any sense. Yeah. He said it's, but I mean, it's not other than that, that, other than that, it's a great country to come to. I mean, just plenty of natural wonders. I mean, oh, I I can't, yeah. yeah, I can't say much because Oklahoma is just flatlands and i say what is that in oklahoma i don't really hear much about it uh not much oil well uh, wind energy <laughs> fishing Freedom i guess juice. yeah yep, fishing i guess i mean i live on a lake i mean the only good fact i could say off the top of my head is it's a uh, all of our lakes are 100 percent man-made we're entirely hydroelectric powered that's oh, nice a, that's about the only interesting thing i could think of i mean <laughs> we got salt cool. flats but we don't have like you know Yosemite or big mountains to great gaze at or anything. Yeah. No, I did. I did love visiting the U.S. when I um I did visit Florida to go to the um Kennedy Space Center. <laughs> oh no! I just reset the position. Okay, can I please tell me I can control Z that? I just accidentally reset the position of this thing. I've just been tweaking the position of. Oh, that's, <laughs> that's fine. It's fine. Oh, oh my god! <laughs> I was going. Like, oh no! I don't want to spend another twenty minutes adjusting the position of this thing. No, it's fine. It's cool. Okay, disaster yeah. averted. The Control Z version <laughs> button sometimes works better than others. Um, when you this heavily modded, I remember once like I I miss I misplaced something, so I Control Z and it undid like all of the. I spent like twenty minutes setting up USI things, and then I misplaced something and just automatically Control Z it and it reset all of the USI stuff. And I wanted to. Cry. Oh God. <laughs> yeah. Minoka. 
Kenny's the uh, space center down there in Florida is pretty nice. I actually had the fortune of going down there when they did the first crew dragon launch to ISS. Oh, no way. But, yeah, I was actually able to go down there and watch it and take pictures. It was definitely fun, the fun, the experience with, especially with all the COVID stuff going on. The day we were looking around, it's like, man, when space comes involved, that stuff just goes out the window. <laughs> yeah. No, but to actually, cool, to actually sit there and feel it, watch it go up, and actually feel the rumble in your chest, it's just something that... Oh, I would love that, to uh, see a rocket launch. I've never seen one. I really want to see one. It's it's a once-in-a-lifetime experience right there, the CM launch. Oh, man. I'm sure it is. I'm going to launch this, uh, <laughs> this Venture Star now and see how badly it implodes. I have auto-strutted it all now, though, so it might be a little bit better. Um, have we still got a solitary crew member? There we go. Now we do. Let's launch it and see what happens. Um, okay, Andrew just pointed out in the chat Oklahoma has no business existing. <laughs> hey, we we have the largest oil reserve in the world right now, okay? So I don't know how much of uh, uh, flex that is, but <laughs> <laughs> I can't it's defend totally my flex. state. <laughs> Yeah, I can't I mean, defend you know, it. I mean, I admit, I admit, my state's pretty, uh, pretty boring. But more interesting than Southampton. The only thing Southampton has to its name is the Titanic left from here, then went to I think a dock in Ireland, and then went across the Atlantic and hit an iceberg. And also, it has the worst particular air pollution of any city in Europe. I think that's about it. Um, doing uni here has measurably shortened my life <laughs> and gave me asthma i did have asthma before i came to uni here the pollution's so bad um, yeah see i i've never i've never been to big cities to experience air pollution i mean my the town i live in has a max population of maybe seven to eight thousand in the summer wow. for vacation so i mean we get fresh air i mean you get out in a fresh like just rain to get that dewy mornings and just take a deep breath and it's all clean Oh, that must be beautiful. I grew up in London, and then I moved to Southampton, which is even more polluted than the <laughs> capital city. So you know, I could... nothing oh, beats the Kraken hasn't destroyed the spacecraft this time. Oh, that's good. I love it when it doesn't blow up the spacecraft. Um, I'm just checking the vector of these engines. Yeah, these engines will burn around the around the mirror. I think, just about, just about. If it's like perfectly expanded and it goes in a line, it would just miss. Okay, let's uh, fire them up. It has overheated very quickly. This thing's they definitely blow thrust. up. Still, okay, I'm looking at the reference photo of the Venture Star. Ellie, do you see the resemblance? What do you think? See it? It looks like a picture. Yay! Now, I would say, are you going to build the Valkyrie next? But that ain't that hard because there's a mod with the main body yeah, parts OST of the Valkyrie. Yeah, literally just like yeah. that. Yeah. Uh, no, I'm just going to use condors. I'll have two condors on either side, I think. I think um, that giant ship just to transport the four little pods all the way at the bottom. Yeah. I mean, it's, you know, that's why I love the Venture Star because it's practical you know, kind of realistic like you know that's what you would need to transport a relatively small amount of cargo you know into stellar distances um well i'm pretty happy with how that looks actually four hours of building to flight for all of 10 minutes yeah um, i'm what i'm gonna do actually is just turn off um if there we go turn on and ignore max temperature so nothing explodes and then see if i can just fire these Thrust zero kilonewtons. Insufficient electricity. And why is that? Reaction control window. Oh, I haven't filled it with antimatter, I think. Maybe I burnt all the antimatter already. Oh, no, I haven't. Does it? I mean, the big bottom sail is a solar panel, isn't it? Or is it a. Uh, we're not producing any megajoules right now. Maybe that's because we're full of waste heat? Oh, it's producing. I'm trying to figure out how this works. Freethinker, did you use the graphene or non-graphene radiators? 
these are titanium radiators because they look cool and only because they look cool and that's it uh, and i want it to look like the ship um i'm trying to figure out why this isn't working i think i might use it might have stuck the wrong reactor on this uh, it's producing thermal power which needs a um i think it needs a a thermal generator connected to it to actually produce megajoules. I think maybe this thing needs charged particles and it actually needs power. You need to connect with a thermal power generator is what he said. Yeah. So something that takes that thermal heat and then converts it to power. See the propeller, oh here we go. So yeah, so it needs, it needs charged particles to as the propellant basically so its propellant requirement is met 100 percent but it also needs a bunch of electricity to actually power the nozzle itself i didn't i didn't consider that um to make it work okay so we do need to stack a power gen i think i need a charge particle direct converter because this thing produces well it apparently produces thermal power so we'll try a thermal generator first and then we'll see what that does yeah you need to connect it with a thermal power generator okay that makes sense Cool. It makes sense because um, it's a magnetic nozzle, so lots yeah, of power to run magnets. Yeah, it needs power. So it's got the fuel, which comes directly out of the reactor, but... It'd be cool if those massive radiators doubled as a solar panel. And that's not how th <laughs> these things work, but... Um... I, I know, but I'm just thinking the sur <laughs> it would be surface cool, area. Yeah. yeah, it would be cool. Okay, let's try, let's try slapping that on. Um, I'm going to have to cut this chat a little short because I think it would be mm -hmm. nice to chat to Andrew as the last person to talk to on stream. I think we've got 10 minutes of the stream left, so I'll uh, get Andrew on for the end. But yeah, it's been lovely talking to you, Lightning. Obviously, you've been a massive supporter of the channel. Um, and yeah, we'll do a game night at some point, as I said, so you can you can show our laugh once and for all. Um, but yeah, thanks for coming on stream. I hope you've uh, hope you've had fun and thank you. Thank you for all the support, man. All right. And yeah. And yeah. Um, you know, best of luck with everything. Yep, you all get better from that engineer. COVID. Yeah, well, I'm on the I'm on the way out of it now, so I'll be fine. I'll be able to leave the house from Tuesday, so that'd be lovely. Right, um, I guess enjoy Oklahoma <laughs> more than all I right. enjoy Southampton. <laughs> right, nice talking to you. See you, Lightning. See you. Bye. Right, let's get Andrew on here. Let's have a little chat with Andrew. It's Andrew's mod we're using. I'm messaging Andrew on Discord. Andrew, go on Discord. Do I have Andrew on Discord? Andrew, at me in the at me in the the chat and the <laughs> the chat of my Discord so that I can add you as a friend. Oh no, there we go. Send friend request, I think. Let's try that. Andrew's typing. I've never actually spoken to Andrew before. Been using his mod for ages. Never spoken to him. Andrew says, I'm nervous. Hi, nervous. Let's give him a ring. <laughs> okay, I've given I've given them a ring. They're, they're not answering yet. We'll see if they answer. Hello, Andrew. Currently can't hear you. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, there you are. Hi, how's it going? Uh, I'm doing pretty good. I am currently procrastinating. Um, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I'm designing an interstellar spacecraft in a video game, so <laughs> not much better, uh, to be honest. Um, how's it? How's it going? I mean, we've never actually spoken directly before. Yeah, we haven't. Um... I mean, yeah, I've just kind of stepped away from like Kerbal Space Program and all that sort of stuff. Um, you know, school is pretty, pretty 
demanding so <laughs> yeah 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 for sure um so whereabouts are you from i'm from ohio yeah are you from ohio yeah i remember I, I pretended to be from ohio for an april fool's joke like three years ago um <laughs> in a youtube video um not sure why yeah I ohio is just like the most like generic u.s <laughs> state i feel like i don't know <laughs> Yeah, I don't really know much about it. So, in, in what in what way? So, what's uh, what's what's super generic about Ohio? I don't know. I mean, it's just like the you know the like prototypical Midwestern state. Like, our we don't really have a like particularly unique accent or anything. We don't really have any unique food. It's just all very, all very bland. <laughs> <laughs> but it did create you. So you know, and your wonderful yeah. Life. There's that. Yeah. <laughs> So, There's yeah, also a lot of astronauts um, from Ohio, so that's oh, really? pretty cool. Or yeah, just like a lot of because I mean, um, Neil Armstrong was from Ohio. Yeah. Oh no way! I didn't know that. Yeah, oh, that's cool. I might I'm gonna ask you a little bit about um, about extra solar then, like so just that out of interest, you know. So what what made you want to want to make extra solar? You know, as a mod and you know, where did you um, start KSP modding? How'd you get into it? I think because I saw a, this was like six years ago, which is crazy to think that I started Extra Solar six years ago. Uh, but I saw, I can't even remember what the mod was called. It was a mod made by like Nyako. Mm -hmm. um, I think it was like Outer Worlds or I, I it was something like that. Or was it the Outer Planets mod? Uh, I don't think it was Outer, I, I, I can't even remember the name of it, but it was a mod that like Nyako made. And I was like, oh, that's pretty cool. I want to try doing that. And so I did. <laughs> <laughs> well, fair enough. I mean, you did a great job on it. I mean, I've loved exploring it, you know, landing on all the different planets. And yeah, I, I, yeah, I was just sorry that the series uh, died for, <laughs> for as long as it did. Because, <laughs> um, uh, yeah, no, it's been it's been a lot of fun exploring it because I, I installed I installed the actual mod such a long time before I actually traveled to the system and and started exploring it and um, yeah yeah but uh, yeah well, you know thank you well thanks for making the mod to start with I mean yeah I mean no problem <laughs> wouldn't, have a, <laughs> wouldn't have a series about it so you know um, yeah. <laughs> what are you doing now anyways you said you sort of stepped away from mod development or uh yeah i sort of i sort of started working on like a like a europe universalis mod and then i stopped doing that and yeah now i don't really i don't really make mods anymore so <laughs> that's true i don't you know doing maybe sort of career wise or education wise or whatever you're up to um, well, I'm I'm studying astrophysics. Yeah. Oh, awesome! Really? Yep. That's amazing. Are you doing that at uh, a college then, or like, at what sort of stage are you at? Uh, yeah, yeah. I'm a second year in university. Where are you? Uh, where are you at? Um, I go to the University of Chicago, so that's pretty cool. fun. Yeah. I don't know any of my U.S. states. What state is Chicago in? That's. Illinois. That's Illinois. Okay, yeah. <laughs> so my, my US geography is uh is more than a little bit rusty. I don't know, cool, that's great. So yeah, so I assume you've sort of got interested in Kerbal did like Kerbal Space Program sort of nurture that interest, like it sort of it did with with what I'm studying or have you always sort of interested in it? Um, I think I was interested in it before Kerbal Space Program, but like it definitely like made my interest more like i don't know well it's like a gateway it's sort of drug just... isn't it <laughs> yeah 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 <laughs> that's how i found it yeah Sorry, i'm just gonna cheat this uh this venture star into orbit what do you, what's your opinion on the on the venture star by the way is it what are the thoughts i mean i think it looks pretty cool <laughs> thank you <laughs> i'm trying i'm trying my best with it but um yeah. yeah, it's been so long since I've actually like played Kerbal Space Program. Like I haven't mm -hmm. actually played it in so long. Uh, okay, so 
Ran out of fuel for antimatter. Oh my god, I just used all the antimatter in like a split second. Okay, let's fill up this thing like completely with antimatter and see how long it lasts. There's no plume on the engine, which isn't ideal. Holy crap, though. This thing is producing like a third of a G of thrust. Which is insane. How much antimatter is it burning through? Quite a bit. Okay, this is awesome. It works. Wait a second. If I turn this turn off ignore max temperature, does this produce too much heat? Yes. Yes, oh my god, it produces too much heat. This thing is overheating very, very quickly. I am kind of tempted to watch it explode to be honest, but um yeah, I think I'm I've dicked around with the um with the install of KSP Interstellar so much that I probably I'm probably the one that broke the plume of this thing if it's supposed to have a plume at all. Um, yeah. Oh, someone in the chat has just pointed out that that's another STEM, <laughs> another STEM person on stream. We have nothing but STEM people. Um, <laughs> yeah, I mean I think that's pretty you know pretty expected. <laughs> and thankfully, the reaction wheel on the centrifuge is powerful enough this can actually orient itself relatively well it doesn't seem to need reaction control thrusters which is uh is pretty cool i don't think these engines are oh these engines do have gimbal okay um yeah i do have i do have hydrogen uh free thinker it's producing quite a lot of thrust it's working let me see each of these is producing six thousand kilonewtons of thrust so apart from the fact that this doesn't have enough radiators like at all, which I mean I, I did know like KSP Interstellar since it is realistic is just an exercise in radiator spam. Um, but yeah, let's see how far this thing could get on a full tank of fuel. Let's just like whack the time warp up and and see what speeds it could get to. And just and just go bananas. Because you can do a uh, persistent thrust through time warp with KSP Interstellar, which is great. Oh my gosh. Oh, we've already used all the antimatter now. Uh, maybe I should have timed it so that... Um, uh, the engines didn't turn off when it ran out of antimatter, I don't think. So that wasn't a very good test. Sorry, I'm just sort of talking to myself. Um, <laughs> uh, okay, I'm going to try and do a test and see. I think it might need a, a lot more antimatter storage because it's got like a huge amount of hydrogen storage but you can't you can't store antimatter in the in the massive cryogenic fuel tank like the massive spherical tanks and really obviously it needs an equal amount of antimatter and hydrogen um for this to work so yeah yeah i've never actually used interstellar before so this is just like black magic to me <laughs> <laughs> i mean to be fair it's basically it's basically black magic to me. Oh, I didn't need to revert to launch. I could have just refilled it with antimatter. Hmm. Oh, well, I guess we'll sit here for 10 minutes while the game loads because this is in such an old version of KSP now that the memory leak problems are real bad. Like, it takes a long time to load when you've been playing for a while. Um, but, uh, but yeah, so like, when did you sort of first find out about my channel? Was it when I started playing your mod or...? Um, no, it was actually, um, I guess, like similar to a lot of people is when you did like your collaborative warfare series. Mm. Um, and so I watched that and then I sort of stopped watching you for a while. And then I heard that like somebody was making a series with my mod and I was like, oh, this beardy guy, I recognize him. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah, cool. Did you, uh, well, have you been enjoying the series? <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, it's it's kind of been on a long hiatus. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, it has been. Um, but, uh, yeah, I mean, I imagine, well, maybe it's, you know, is it kind of cool for someone to be sort of using a mod that you created? And I don't know, I just, I'm just wondering, like, yeah, no, it definitely does feel weird because I don't, like, personally, I don't feel like extrasolar is, like, that good. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. for somebody we all to feel be that, like... Though. Like, I hate all of my <laughs> earlier projects. That's just... 
<laughs> part of being human i think um <laughs> so yeah it does feel some it does feel weird for somebody to be like you know using my mod in like in a youtube series i don't know it's mm -hmm. just i don't know it's um yeah so yeah i imagine it's, it's weird at the, on that sort of level but it is a great mod and thanks for also giving me like tech support <laughs> when i've had like problems and things um yeah because even like long after you'd sort of stopped supporting it um you still give me a hand with any of these sort of issues i'd had i've had people just point out to me though that the radiators and everything should be angled with the engines that's a mistake it shouldn't just have the nozzles angled the whole the whole radiator and everything assembly needs to be angled with it so i need to fix that but um yeah so i've just realized that whoopsie daisy People are like, yeah, I shouldn't have the nozzle just at a random angle. Like the whole engine and radiator assembly all needs to be at, I think, about 15 degrees, something like that. Yeah. But yeah, again, you know, thanks for the mod. I mean, it's, it's a great Yeah, mod. no problem. It's just great having somewhere to somewhere to explore to, you know, somewhere to, somewhere to go. It was, it was really cool. Like, um, so I, I think I originally changed the... Um, change the config so the distant object enhancement config so that they were all the same color so that the valentine star wasn't glitchy so they so you could see valentine as it was so I, all the planets were the same color as the star right so it was just one big blob in the sky um so that in the series like while i was playing through you could always look up and, and see it which i think was really really cool you know you could yeah so be like oh yeah that's where we're going and uh then combined with research bodies like it was a lot of fun um actually going exoplanet hunting and using you know waiting until the planets were transiting across valentine and then using a telescope to actually look at them um, and discover them that way um, i don't know it was just something sort of kind of i'm really excited it just makes me like having played it played the game like this it just makes me even more excited for ksp2 you know when all of that is is really built into the game um yeah I yeah <laughs> yeah I, I yeah i think i'm definitely very excited to see where like what ksp2 will be like and you know the mods that people will be making for it like i don't know i think um these reactors they don't use lh2 they use atomic hydrogen so i'm running out of hydrogen so these shouldn't have been lh2 tanks these should have been hydrogen tanks I think it does use a bit of LH2 to as fuel, maybe, but it also uses a lot more hydrogen, I think, to feed the reactor. So the reactor annihilates hydrogen and antimatter, and that produces the power and the charged particles. So the power that powers the magnetic nozzle and the charged particles, which then fly out of it, but it also, I think, throws liquid hydrogen out of it. I don't exactly know how it works, but... Either way, this thing isn't going to get up to a ridiculously high speed. It's only got up to about six kilometers per second before running out of hydrogen. Um, let's see how far it could get before running out of antimatter. With not a huge amount of antimatter storage, actually, if these, I think if these massive circular fuel tanks contained antimatter, then this would be going to like beyond relativistic speeds. But it's getting up to about 23 kilometers per second okay but let's have a look a little look at the amount of liquid hydrogen this thing stores so i'll just do some i'm just gonna do some maths for the viewers i don't know exactly how the units are on this oh here we go so it can carry a maximum of 7.68 kilograms of antimatter cool and this giant fuel tank is currently carrying 978 tons which means if these actually two of these so it's times two so if two of these were full of antimatter that's 254 times more fuel so it's 254 times our velocity roughly i'm just going to do this math to make people happy times 24 kilometers per second we get us up to 
six thousand kilometers per second which is what fraction of c c is what three hundred thousand kilometers per second i think yes let me look at meters per second no yeah three hundred thousand kilometers per second so it's three hundred i think it's three times the eight i want to say that's a good I know, I just did the math the wrong way around. Okay, right, so this is... Ah, calculator answer function is not liking me today. Okay. Six... So 6,000 kilometers, kilometers per second. Okay, so it's just this is going to be 6,000 over 300,000 gives us 2% of the speed of light. It's pretty cool. So yeah, if this was fully fueled, this would get to two percent the speed of light. I think the Venture Star in Avatar gets to like seventy five percent or something. It accelerates at like a that few seems G's, a little like two or three level. G's. I think it's a bit ridiculous how fast it can get there, um, even with antimatter power. It is a lot bigger than my little mini one, but I think yeah, this goes about two percent the speed of light. I think the Clark went half of a percent, if that. So. Yeah, so it's feasible that this could this could get to about two percent the speed of light. Um, obviously, it needs to slow down the other way. But this that this does mean though that this is so yeah, it could accelerate to one percent and then decelerate at the other end. Um, but the Clark travelled at half a percent, so that does mean that this is twice as fast as the Clark. So I'm glad that I at least did some of the maths and found out that yes, this second generation interstellar ship would actually be worth building, right? <laughs> it doesn't just look cool. Like I think if I was going to, I was originally going to build this and actually use it to explore other solar systems. Um, I was going to add a bunch more solar systems and carry on, but the save stability and everything just put an end to that, that idea really. Um, yeah. But yeah, this could actually work as a replacement. It would be twice as fast um so that's cool that's pretty cool there we go um i'll fix these engines and then i think that'll be the end of the stream i don't know if you've got anything you want to sort of talk about or anything um i might just go through some of the some of the donations um before ending but it's been lovely to to chat to you even just briefly andrew right. um i've been using yeah. a mod for ages and i've seen your comments and you've been watching following the series and yeah obviously <laughs> it's been uh there's a lot of people that you know i sort of obviously never had a, a voice to put to the put to the name so yeah. yeah it was definitely cool to talk to you and uh um yeah and thank you for you know making an entire series about uh my little mod that i created <laughs> well yeah again thanks for well thanks for creating it thanks so much mm -hmm. and uh yeah lovely talking to you i'll uh i'll probably talk to you another time maybe that'd be nice uh, yep. Right. Best of luck with your degree and uh, see you around. Yep. See ya. Good right. night. <laughs> see ya. Good night. All right. We're just going to read a few more messages and I'll fix these engines. Then we're going to call it a night. Goodness me. It's getting late. So these engines need to be angled like that. I think that is about right. And the panels like that. There we go. Just gonna bring these on in. Apologies for being a little bit of a perfectionist. The engines are still just about angled enough. Bring that panel over. Bring this panel over. Of 
God, this thing is bigger than KSP knows what to deal with. So it takes a lot of scrolling about to deal with. And this is what, like, a fraction. This is 300 meters long. And the real Venture Star is 1,600 meters long. It's a fraction of the size. And it's already broken the game. <laughs> Panel down just a bit. Irritating these radiators actually taper a tiny bit, so that's not going to be exactly right. There we go. You can see why I liked having people on stream because my brain is frazzled, and while you're focusing on building something, it's you know, it's easy to listen to someone, but it's not so easy to come up with <laughs> conversation topics yourself. Okie dokie. Right. That is finished, I'm pretty sure. Unless anyone has any glaring design flaws that they want to point out to me. We are done with our Venture Star. I might install um, whatever mod it is that lets you move things a little further because this is at the limit of how far out the offset tool would let me move this well then maybe i can make these a little larger and move it out so it means a little bit of tweaking here and there move the engines a bit further out if possible um but yeah that's that somebody would like to see what would a kerbal look like next to it i'll just quickly get a little command c because i can't be really bothered to get an actual kerbal out but um the answer is very small this is a command seat that i've got equipped right now imagine if we just put a command seat like on one of the engines and they're just riding it like dr strange lifestyle there they are that's the scale of a kerbal compared to this behemoth i'll definitely have a kerbal on eva in the final cinematic so you can get a scale for it but this is definitely bigger than the clock i think But there it is, in all its glory. This is the absolute limit, even with a hanger extender, of how massive I can make a craft. So, yeah, but I think it's nicely proportioned. Um, it's actually looking fairly close to, to the scale of the actual ship. Let's just expose that mirror so we can see that. There we go. So I have two condors on there. We have a crew condor, cargo condor, um, and then that's it. The whole thing will be ready for an interstellar voyage to an undisclosed location. So thank you for watching the stream, everyone. Thank you to everyone who donated to the stream. Uh, let's read the last ones we got before I go. Goodness me, this has been a long stream, hasn't it? So the last one we have was Lyris complaining about the 3D printer. Then uh, Radio Frank, time to make a mini Venture Star in KSP. Dennis, nothing like firing antimatter through an elbow piece thruster. It'll be fine. Yeah, we fixed that now. We fixed it now. But thank you for the donation, Dennis. Twenty pounds, very generous of you. She might, it might be Dennis Klomp that we had on earlier. So thank you, Dennis. Uh, we got Ratamizia coming back for a second to say that the mod WSD editor camera continued does allow the VAB camera to zoom out effectively forever. I'm gonna stop camera, but I might break the save. Yeah, anything that's mod new. Yeah, this is a 1.7.3 save. And KSP is in 1.12 now. Uh, Olaf then donated twice saying taking the top spot what do you think of this lightning let's see who's but his hand on the lightning <laughs> uh, thank you very much uh, to everyone who donated today there's a lot of people donating and everyone who joined me in the chat and everyone who's watched um, it's been a lot of fun uh, despite my COVID <laughs> but yeah I'm quite happy with the final result actually 
I'm pretty chuffed. Uh, I'm having a little look at one of the diagrams of it, and actually the engines look like they're inclined at about the right angle. So yeah, I think this needs to be moved out a little bit, but I'll get like an advanced edited, advanced tweakables or, or whatever it is that lets you offset forever. So I'll move it out. I'll fix that another time though. For the final cinematic and for the finale of this series, this is the penultimate quote unquote episode. Um, so you just got a cinematic to look forward to when I have enough time to record the song for it and record all the cinematics. You have a cryo mod. Yes, that's deep freeze. That's what these modules are. Yeah, thank you for watching everyone. Thank you to Freethinker for all this uh, advice in the chat, because I've certainly needed it <laughs> with a few of these things. Um, yeah, they don't make big enough antimatter tanks in this mod because only a madman would ever <laughs> use this much antimatter. Um, <clears throat> yeah, that's it. You want to say goodnight, Ellie? You want to say goodnight? Huh? Say goodnight to the stream. Do you want to say goodnight to the stream? Oh, goodnight. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Took a few tries. There we go. Right. Thank you for watching, everyone. Uh, I guess I've been the Beauty Penguin, and uh, I will see you all next time. <laughs>